For nearly a half century, runners from all across the globe have gathered along the shores of Lake Michigan to take part in the Chicago Marathon. No path for any of these athletes has been identical to another's. But there is a common bond among the 47,000 who line up today and the near million who lined up before. The will, the drive, the determination to push their bodies for more than 26 miles through 29 neighborhoods. So on this traditional Sunday, spectators will again fill the streets to support the thousands who journey to the finish line, just like those million who lined up before. This is the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. All right, we are here as the day dawns on this crisp October morning here in the city of Chicago. Grant Park is buzzing with anticipation. We are mere moments away from the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. And you know, today is not just about the tens of thousands of runners who will cross the start line. It's also about you and the entire city of Chicago. And good morning to you and welcome to the Bank of America Chicago Marathon Studio. I'm Marion Brooks, joined as always by these fantastic analysts, Ed Eyestone, Carrie Tollison, and Amanda McCrory. And Ed, hey, we've got a big storyline going here. We may see a world record. Well, Marianne, there is a new sheriff in town and his name is Kelvin Kiptum. In only his second marathon, he won the London Marathon in 201.25, the second fastest marathon of all time. A a mere 16 seconds off of the world record. The pace setters are going to bring him through a world record pace. And if he can finish strong like he did in London, we could see fireworks at the finish. That's going to be so cool. And Carrie, Ruth Chepengedich, our returning champion, she wants a three-peat. She sure does. She was one of 10 last year to win back-to-back. -back. And this year, she could be the first in the foot race to win three in a row. Last year, she talked about the world record. This year, she's talked about the world record. You know what? We could see some fast times. That's what Chicago's all about. And Carrie Pinkelski's brought in such a great field to push her along the way. I'm excited to see her go. And we're all excited. And Amanda, I have to say, the wheelchair racers were on fire in Berlin a short time ago. Another, a world record was set. A world record. I cannot wait for this race. In Berlin, just a couple weeks ago, we had four women smash the world record by over a minute. And three of those four will be racing here today, including our new world record holder, Switzerland's Catherine DeBruner. That's going to be exciting. I can't wait to see all that kick off. All right. Now, the runners are going to notice some changes as they approach the finish line this year. So for more on that, let's send it out to Layla Rahimi down in Grand Park. Hey, Layla. Finish line here, putting the final touches on this finish line. You can see at the 45th running of this Bank of America Chicago Marathon. And one huge difference is what's right here. As we can see the workers, we also see the stands that have been erected behind them. 2,500 And once they cross that finish line, the athletes will get this medal commemorating the 45th year with the Chicago City and also the star as part of the motif. Now let's go to the star line. That's where our Alex Maragos is joined by race director Kerry Pinkowski. Alex. Hey, Layla, a lot of excitement here at the start with Kerry Pinkowski. Kerry, 33 years doing this. How does it feel today with perfect weather out here? All right, we're going to try to get back to Kerry Pinkowski and Alex in just a minute because he's got to be thrilled. 33 years he has been headlining this race and bringing a great field, and this field a lot of people are excited about. All right, we also know that the weather is always a big deal as it relates to any kind of running. Really big deal today. And Layla is with Kevin Jeans, one of our meteorologists down at the um, down at the start line. We'll get to them in just a second because, oh, there they are. All right. Layla, we know how big weather is when it comes to marathon running. What's Kevin going to tell us about the forecast? 
That's right. I am joined by Storm Team meteorologist Kevin Jeans. Kevin, we've talked a lot about this weather. It's always top of mind. What are you seeing? Well, the biggest concern this morning has been about the chance of rain. Uh, that was kind of a change, a tweak to the forecast a couple of days ago. And this is what the radar looks like right now. You see a lot of green on there, but fortunately, a lot of that is actually evaporating before it's reaching the ground. So if we do see some rain this morning, it's really going to be in the form of sprinkles, very light rain, I think, at times. But other than that, it's just going to be cloudy today. Our temperatures are going to uh, be in the mid-40s, so there's definitely a chill in the air, which they call perfect runner's weather. But a week ago, it was 87 degrees, by the way, in Chicago. So this is a nice day for the marathon. And a light wind coming at athletes who finish Out right the northwest, here. northwest, just around eight miles per hour. Now let's go over to Jen DeSalvo. Good morning, I'm with Cara D'Amato and Diego Estrada. Now Cara, yesterday came here to Chicago, ran the Abbott 5K, just smashed it. But we're gonna focus on the marathon today. I was asked if Ruth Chepengedich was just gonna be far away from the rest of the field. What do you think when it comes to the elite women? Yeah, last year was definitely the Ruth Chep and Get It show. She ran every step by herself, took the lead from the gun. I do not think it's going to be the same this year. She's going against a field of seven other women that have broken 220, including Savannah San, who we think is going to be able to challenge her for the lead. And the Americans in the field, American record holder Emily Sisson and Emma Bates, I think are both possibly in American record shape. So we are going to see some exciting things today. Oh, wonderful. Now we might see a world record be broken here on this course, Diego. What's the men's field look like? Well, we have the defending champ, Vincent Cabruto. And then two years ago, Safe Futura won. So we have two heavyweights right there. But uh, Calvin Kipton has run two marathons and 201. He's asked for a pace around 60-40. So there's a high chance we might see history in the making. And not only that, there's a guy that has a 58-36, the fastest half marathon in the world. He's going to make his debut, so he's a wild card. We don't know what's going to happen, but the weather's just, this is the best weather I've had in Chicago, and I've been here for about 10 years, so I think history is going to be made today. Wonderful. Now, when it comes to the American field, I heard that we don't have any men yet who have hit the Olympic standard, and we expect that to happen today. Yeah, so the qualification process is a bit complicated. There's a ranking and there's a time, and the time is 208 10 to beat. And Mance was about six, seven seconds off last year. The weather's better, so we expect Mance to have a shot. Galen's making his return after a few years off. I mean, from Chicago. And, uh, you know, it's Galen. So I, I, think, I think they've requested a pace of 63, 30, so that puts them a minute ahead through halfway. So I think they're going to have a good shot at hitting it. And then, of course, we have Lenny Career. Thank you so much, Diego, and thank you, Kara. We're going to send this back to Marion. All right, thanks so much, Jen. We want to get back down to the start line because that's where Alex Maragos is with Kerry Pinkowski. We want to hear more from Kerry. Yeah, great to have Kerry here at the start. Kerry, is this the deepest field you've ever put together at a marathon? I think it is. I think it is. I, I, you know, um, we've got all four of our defending champions back. Our, our Paralympic division behind us here getting ready to go. Uh, amazing. It's, uh, I can't wait to watch. Every division, every athlete was saying the course record could be in doubt for each division. I mean, they're, they're not shy about it this year. I think so. I mean, what Ruth did last year and Emily Sisson with the American record and Ruth flirting with the world record, I think it kind of set the tone that you can really go fast in Chicago. Uh, athletes trained well. Mother Nature is playing a big role this morning, so we have some cool overcast weather. So. Let's go. Can we see some history today? I hope so. I hope so. Uh, there's been five world records in Chicago in the 45-year history, so uh, how fitting would it be to celebrate 45 years with another one? And what's the message to people at home who might go out and cheer today or what, maybe want to support the athletes along the course? Get out. You've, you see some amazing champions, some of the best athletes in the world. You'll see these athletes, many of them, next year in the Olympics. So this is a kind of a preset to uh, seeing them in, on the global stage in a year. Well, if you're going to see some of the elites, you got to get out early because they're going to run some really fast times. So we'll send it back to you guys <laughs> in the studio. All right, Alex Carey, thank you. I think he's right. How fitting. Wouldn't it be great to have a world record at the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon? Well, we're just about 10 minutes away from the start of the men's and women's wheelchair race. We're going to break down who you need to keep your eyes on. So stay with us. We've got more of the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon right after this. Throw this over We're here. Can I give this to you?
Welcome back. Take a look, everybody, at your beautiful city of Chicago. Our drone footage today is sponsored by Abbott, life to the fullest. And as you can see, the runners are making their way into Grant Park. A lot of them are already there. They're getting ready for the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. The elite fields will start in just under 20 minutes. Let's head back out to the start line. Jen DeSalvo is standing by with the president of Bank of America Chicago, Rita Sola Cook. Hey, Jen. Hello, and yeah, right behind us, all of the elite athletes are stretching. We're seeing Emma Bates, Des Linden, but you have a favorite athlete out here. Rita Cook is the president of Bank of America Chicago. Rita, who are you cheering for today? Today we are cheering for my husband who's running his first marathon, her daddy, right, Scarlett? Yeah, oh, that's so exciting. And of course, the other 46,999 runners out here. But when it comes to this event, it expands across the globe. Tell me something about all of the international people we have. So we've got runners from over 140 countries. In fact, a third of our field is coming in from overseas. Many come to Chicago. Now that Bank of America now sponsors the Boston Marathon as well, they come to Chicago because we are flat. We are fast, and that way they can qualify for Boston. Flat and fast, like that is going to be the story today. We might have a world record happening, but we also might have a record of reaching the amount of money raised by charities here. Over $30 million is expected to come in. Correct. You mentioned we've got over 47,000 runners today. 14,000 have dedicated their race to causes we all care about. So today is going to be a record-breaking day. Those 14,000 runners have generated $30 million for charity. Wow, and plus we might be hitting, well, we should be hitting the one millionth runner. We will. Today we are going to see after 45 years of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon, today the one millionth finisher will cross the finish line. That is so exciting. Well, have fun cheering for daddy. It's going to be a wonderful day, wonderful weather here in Chicago for the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Stay tuned all morning because we are going to see a lot of great things coming out of these runners in this field. I'm going to send this back to you. You are so right, Jen. Thanks so much. So, you know, the Bank of America Chicago Marathon is a huge citywide event going through 29 neighborhoods, but this is also a really big deal in the world of marathon races. I want to start with you, Amanda. What makes it special to the wheelchair racers? Well, we're just down the road, or two and a half hours down the road, from the University of Illinois, which is the home of collegiate adaptive athletics in the United States. They have a long history of producing world-class athletes, and the Chicago Marathon has an equally long history of supporting those athletes, bringing in the best of the best, but also giving a lot of athletes it's their first chance at a major marathon. Real quick, Carrie and Ed, what does it mean to the runners? Flat and fast. World <laughs> record, American record, course record, personal record. Yeah. Fast, baby, fast. Yep. I, I came here as an athlete. I tell my athletes to come here. We have fast conditions, fast course, fast competition. We're going to have great times today. All right. Can't wait to see it. Let's head to the start line for the singing of our national anthem. Always an amazing moment. To perform the national anthem, please welcome Issa Marie Medina Marrero from United Voices Chicago, a nonprofit that empowers youth to celebrate their common humanity through music. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the Spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Our 
our thanks again to Isamara Medina Marrero for the national anthem. Now, I'm just a few blocks south of that starting line, and while the 47,000 plus athletes wait to cross this finish line, they are going to be taking a tour of some of the most well known spots here in the city of Chicago. The 2023 Bank of America Chicago Marathon starts, as always, in Grant Park. The runners head north on Columbus, past the NBC Tower to Grant, before heading back towards the Loop. Then they head up LaSalle and enter Lincoln Park, just shy of the five-mile mark. The course continues through the park, running all the way up to Sheridan Road, the northernmost part of the race. Then it's back south through Lakeview, Lincoln Park, and into the Loop, reaching the halfway point, which is also where our Matt Rodriguez and Courtney Hall are stationed. After going as far west as Damon, it's back east, then over to Taylor Street and Little Italy. Next stop, Pilsen, where our Michelle Relliford will be standing by. Kate Chapel will be on the scene at Chinatown. After going as far south as 35th Street, it's back up north, and when runners get to the Bank of America cheer zone at mile 26, there are just two more turns and 0.2 miles before reaching the finish line. One of the most common things that was said by our elite athletes was how much they look forward to this favorite part of the race. No surprise that it is the finish line, Marion. I can't, I can't imagine why it wouldn't be. Thank you so much, Layla. We're just two minutes away from the start of the wheelchair races. So Amanda, let's break down some of these races. Let's start with the women. Susanna Scaroni is our returning champ. I love watching this woman race, and it's not just because she's one of my former teammates. Susanna had her first win at a major here in Chicago last year, followed it up with a win in New York, and then a win in Boston, and she was one of those four women who went under the existing world record in Berlin just a couple weeks ago. And Catherine Drebrenner was right there with her and broke the record. Absolutely. Speaking of world records, Susanna's got her work set out for her this year. Catherine's coming in and she's coming in strong. This is her American Marathon debut and only her fifth marathon ever, but she's already got three wins and she is our new world record holder in the marathon distance. Wow, and let's talk about the men. We've got the silver bullet, Marcel Hoog, always one to watch. All eyes will be on Marcel Hoog here today. He's coming off a dominant performance in Berlin. He is the defending champion here in Chicago. He's going for his fourth win in Chicago, and he's undefeated in 2023, undefeated in 2022. But he still has to deal with Daniel Romanchuk. He is not without competition. Daniel Romanchuk is always strong here. He's the last person to defeat Marcel on the road. All right, let's get to the start right now with a men's wheelchair race. The elite wheelchair competition has just started. All right, they are we off. are ten the minutes away from the start of the on the road. I see Marcel Hoog and his silver bullet. Yeah, always keep your eye on that start. silver helmet. The start is so fast here every year. It is. It is always so exciting to see. All right, we're going to keep a tab. Uh, besides Marcel and Daniel, who else do we want to take a look at real quick here? Who Aaron Pike, right. for sure, is one to keep an eye on here. He's one of uh, he's one of Daniel's training partners, excuse me, at the University of Illinois. He has two podium finishes the past two years, and he's definitely going for a third. We also can't count out Getsy Platt. He's a gold medalist in his own right, coming from the world of paratriathlon. He hasn't had a big win yet in the marathon, but he's always in the mix, always up in the top five. Oh, I always like to see that, and that transition from track to marathon is kind of happening in all disciplines. Now let's get back to the start line for the start of the women's wheelchair race. And they are off. I saw Susanna Scaroni right in there toward the front. It's always exciting to see right when it starts to kick off. So, so cool. We'll be keeping a tab, of course, on all of the races, the men's and women's wheelchair races as they kick off. Earlier this week, though, we talked to our men's and women's champion runners about how they're feeling about today's race. Let's hear what they had to say. I was not expecting to, ra to run uh, that fast uh, to 14 and also missed the world record. But uh, it, uh, it motivated me so much to do more this year. Good experience last year and winning, of course, winning here was a great uh, achievement for me. And uh, I'm glad to be here this year also. 
He's so soft-spoken. Let's <laughs> talk about our champion. He may look soft-spoken, but he can move. What do we want to hear about Benson right yeah, now? Yeah, I hope we didn't disrespect Benson Kipruto by uh, opening up with Kelvin Kipcom because he is an outstanding athlete. He won here last year. He won Boston back in 2021, and he won last year with a late surge over the last 5K, pulling away from his competitors. And if he can finish like that, he maybe has a chance against Kelvin because Kelvin is also a fast finisher. And Carrie, let's talk a little bit more about Ruth. She mentioned it there about missing the world record. Yeah. Now the world record's even further away. What do you think? Can she do it? Well, third time's a charm, right? Third time. I mean, that's what they say. And she sounds very excited. She looks super fit. She has run this race twice before, and every time she gets a little bit better on this course. All right, we shall see. She said she was motivated. Let's get back to the start for the introduction of the men's and women's elite field. Please welcome our 2023 Bank of America Chicago Marathon professional field as we celebrate the 45th running of the Chicago Marathon. Every year as an Abbott World Marathon major, Chicago hosts top athletes from around the world to compete for one of the most prestigious titles in the sport. This year, the Bank of America Chicago Marathon is excited to welcome its professional field to the streets of Chicago. It is my pleasure to introduce the following athletes to the start line. Headlining the women's field, Ruth Chepengedich of Kenya, 2022 and 2021 Bank of America Chicago Marathon champion, 2019 World Marathon champion, and third fastest woman marathoner in history. Zafan Hussan of the Netherlands, 2023 London Marathon champion, three-time World Marathon champion, and Dutch national record holder. Emily Sasson of the United States, America. American Marathon record holder, 2022 Bank of America Chicago Marathon runner-up, and 2020 Olympian. Jocelyn Jepkozgai of Kenya, 2021 London Marathon champion, 2019 New York City Marathon champion, and 2018 World Half Marathon silver medalist. Des Linden of the United States, 2018 Boston Marathon champion, two-time Olympian, and 50K world record holder and headlining the men's field, Vincent Capruto of Kenya, 2022 Bank of America Chicago Marathon Champion, 2021 Boston Marathon Champion, and 2021 Prague Marathon Champion, Kelvin Kiptub of Kenya, 2023 London Marathon Champion, 2022 Valencia Marathon Champion, second fastest marathon time in history, Seifu Tura of Ethiopia, 2021 Bank of America Chicago Marathon Champion, 2022 Paris Marathon Runner-Up, and 2018 Milan Marathon Champion. Galen Rupp of the United States, 2021 Bank of America Chicago Marathon Runner-Up, 2017 Bank of America Chicago Marathon Champion, three-time Olympian. Connor Mance of the United States, 2022 US 20K National Champion, 2021 US Half Marathon National Champion, and two-time NCAA champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2023 Bank of America Chicago Marathon Professional Athlete Field. All right, let's break down the field. First of all, can we talk about some of the faces we saw there? Galen Ruff was mugging, man. It's like he was trying to be intimidating. Just like, oh, I got yeah, this. Yeah, I yeah. got this. All right, let's just break down the American field. Carrie, let's start with the women. We saw Emily out there. You can yeah. see Carrie. She was behind Emily a little bit. But Emily, listen, tell us what we can expect. Well, she's back. She was second here last year, and she set the American record, 218.29 here last year. She said this year might be a little bit of a different strategy for her. She's not bringing personal pacers. She wants to just race. She knows how to run fast. She knows how to race. But this is a big year, and this woman is so focused and so driven. You know, if she can run the way she wants to, I think we could see the lowering of her American record. She does have some competition in Emma Bates. She definitely does. And you talking about swagger on the line? Well, Emma Bates, her motto is run with swagger. She has been running with swagger for the last couple years. Second here in 2021, she ran the second fastest American time on the Boston Marathon course this last spring when she was fifth. And she says she's here to run fast, and she thinks 218 is possible. She says marathon is her race to her body was built for it. Yep. I mean, that's you got to have some confidence with that. All right, Ed, we've got a couple of strong Americans as well, including the returning champion Galen Rupp. Yeah, we saw Galen Rupp just chilling at the starting yeah. line. He is considered one of the greatest American distance runners of all time. He's four time Olympian, two time Olympic medalist, got the silver medal in uh, the 10,000 meters in 2012. 
got the bronze in 2016 in Rio. A very strong runner. Unfortunately, he's, he's been plagued with injuries over about the last year and a half. He dropped out of the New York City Marathon in 22. But I talked to him pre-race. He's feeling good. He's feeling like he's ready to roll. He's going to go out on about 2.06.30 pace. Okay. So I think if he can hold it together, he is Galen Rupp. He is awesome. And then, of course, we have Connor Mance, who will be, I'm a little biased towards biased, because Connor I'm Mance, his coach. Guy. He debuted here last year. He ran 2.08.16. I think he's in better shape than that this year. He's learned a lot from that first Chicago Marathon and from running Boston. He's going to go out at about 2.07 pace. And again, I think if he's patient, then he can destroy some people over the last half. All right. Now, Connor, Ed, you didn't know this, had a few things to say about you oh. during the press conferences. Let's listen into what he had to say. Ed Eyestone is one of the best coaches in the country. If, in my opinion, the best coach, he knows what he's doing. He cares about his athletes. He is really, he has, he's really knowledgeable about other things too. So he, it's not just running, running, running. It's like, you know, if you want to go out for some good food, he'll take you to the best Thai restaurant in town. <laughs> you gotta love that the best coach out there oh wow what's it like to hear that's, that? that's bringing tears Get to my together. eyes i'm a little verklempt here <laughs> uh, but no he's an awesome person to work with and so dedicated so hard working we're just keeping our fingers crossed that he can have a good race. and you guys surprised me with that that was we that's did. no fair we did surprise you. him yeah. all right well, let's get a look outside right now at the wheelchair racers and see what it's looking like where are we there we go okay here's our men's and women's elite 5K for the men. This is a little bit of a flashback to last year. We've got Susanna up out on her own and Marcel up ahead on his own as well. Yeah, well, and that's what Marcel said he wanted to do. He wanted to get a good distance. He sure did. He wants to push that pace. He thinks that he can go faster for longer than anyone else in the field. And so far, he's proven himself correct. So far. Okay, let's talk a little bit about this being an interesting year because the Olympic trials are basically upon all of these athletes starting next couple of weeks in New York, which is what your Olympic trial is for Paralympics, right? That's correct. The New York City Marathon will be the selection event for the Paralympic Marathon team that's going to Paris. So it's going to be the top two finishers, male and female, from the U.S. We've already hit, everyone who is a top contender has already hit their minimum qualification standards, so they're good to go. So this is really their last chance to make sure everything is, is set, is ready, they're feeling fit and ready to go for New York. And quick, Ed, I know it's tough and you can't do it in 15 seconds, but <laughs> the Olympic trials, what are the key for the, for the, of the runners? Bottom line is all American distance runners are praying that Galen Rupp, Connor Mance, uh, Leonard Career can break 208.10 because that will unlock three spots for the Olympic Games for the U.S. All right, time for the race to begin. Let's head to the start line for the beginning of the marathon. Chicago Marathon is underway. And they are off, guys. What's going through the minds of the folks as they are just kicking off? Well, it's such a perfect day, great conditions. I think that puts a little bit of pressure on you to, to know, okay, I got the right conditions, I got a good field, I'm gonna get out and hit my pace. Right now, they're looking for their pace setters, making sure that they can get behind them and then just try to click off those early miles as comfortably as possible. And how can we identify the pace setters? Are they the ones in the, I mean, tell us who- Yeah, if you look there, they're wearing the white singlets, they have pacer on their on their chest that should say pacer one two three i, th I think carrie gathered over what 16 19, 19 pace setters that will be helping out today we have at least four up front with kelvin kipton going 60 40 for the first half there was a bit of a debate because originally they were talking about going 61 30 a little slower through half and then they decided hey good conditions let's go out a little bit faster some people were saying hey this is too fast not too fast i think at the end of the day they're going at 60 40 which is right at world record pace i think harry pinkowski wants to get that world record <laughs> he's trying to do what he can do to make sure that happens and by the way, you guys, I know we're starting to see the uh, the regular runners start to take off. These are the folks that are actually really good athletes. They're doing quite well when they're when they're heading off right after the elites. But there is a major milestone that is going to be reached on this marathon day. There will be the one millionth finner finisher rather crossing the finish line. This is amazing. What do you think that this means, Amanda, for any athlete to be noted as a millionth? I think that it is so cool and it's so special that that millionth finisher is going to be towards the back of the pack. 
all of these athletes put in so much time, so much dedication. Running a marathon takes a ton of training. And to be able to celebrate someone who is finishing back in those 30,000s, someone who isn't normally going to get all of that, that fanfare at the finish, this is an awesome opportunity. It is. Carrie, what do you think? I mean, it's sort of like winning the lottery, right? When we get that that email that says you are the one millionth, who gets that? Not yeah. many people, right? So I think they're going to be super excited and, and bravo to them and to all the athletes. This is a big commitment that they're taking. It is. And Ed, what do you think? Well, I, I think it just means there's a million stories of people being dedicated, working hard, and then the positive enablers around them that supported them in this process. I'm taking a bit of pride because I've run this thing three times, so I take part of at it. least three of those numbers, right? <laughs> over the years so just a great plus it tells you this marathon has been around for a long time 45 years and they have the critical mass to get us to 45 or to get us to a million over those years so phenomenal organization a great race people Bank of America Chicago Marathon is a destination marathon it's a place where people want to come 45 years it's hard to do anything for 45 years <laughs> hats off Gary Pinkowski has been at the helm for 33 of those 45 and as we take a look at the elite field we want to urge you to stay with us. The Bank of America Chicago Marathon will be back right after this. One of my favorite parts of the marathon is uh, actually the, the hill at the end. Um, I think that's a like, cool tactical point. It's an uphill, it's very end, um, and then you've got like a sharp turn towards the finish. I think it's just because you know like you're there. You know that um, you're about to complete a marathon, and it's just, I don't know, exciting also to be so close to stopping. <laughs> So interesting to hear that some folks actually like Mount Roosevelt, as it's called, getting up that last hill. They know it's around the corner. Okay, this is your, your quad box, as we call it. You're seeing the front runners and the elite fields of all four races. Marcel Hoog just went out of shot right there. That There he is. There's that camera. 
And then uh, we have, who's the, I think you said it was Catherine DeBrunner. We've got Susanna Scaroni in the lead of the women with Catherine DeBrunner right behind her. I was expecting to see Manuela Schar up there as well, one of Catherine's Swiss teammates. But it sounds like she's a couple minutes back with the chase pack. All right, now here's the men's elite field. Can we, we see the Pacers are still working out front, and I think Kelvin Kipton's in there, Ed. Yeah, well, what I'd like to see is the fact that we'd have six men running behind the four rabbits. The rabbits, again, the pace setters are the guys wearing the white singlets, and so then we have a critical mass here early on, at least. Not It's not just Kelvin Kipton, which I was a little concerned about. It looks like five other uh, men are running with him. So we have six runners running behind the pace setters. Kelvin Kipton is wearing one of the uh, kind of blue, uh, bluish uniforms that Nike has. All of the Nike athletes are wearing the same blue one. Uh, the one athlete not in that is, a, I think that's John Career probably wearing the orange uh, Asics uh, singlet is in there as well. So no surprises this early. Of course, we're only, uh, what, seven and a half minutes in. So, uh, so, so we got some good things going. All right, let's see what Diego is seeing from the Moto, which is right now. We don't have Diego right now. We'll try to get back to him as quickly as possible. Let's talk a little bit more about these Pacers. Um, because not every marathon has pacers. What is the what is the, the thinking and the strategy <laughs> well, behind that? Well, the thinking when you're going at world record paces, you need to have some world class athletes up front, and we do because you, I mean to, to run halfway at this pace, you have to be uh, an amazing athlete. So we have Gerba Debaba, Eric Kiptanui, Bernard Ngeno, and Ronald Kirui uh, are all these uh, pace setters, and they're all guys who are capable of running under 60, well under 60 minutes for the half marathon, and they're going to be taking them through at least uh, half marathon, maybe as far as uh, 30K. All right, let's check in with Diego Estrada now. He is right there with the lead pack. You can see him, in fact, with the white helmets right there with the moto. Diego, what's it looking like for your vantage point? Well, it looks like they're fully committed to chasing the world record, and there's about five guys that, are, that want to play with Kiptum. But the first mile was right around 432, 2K 538, and that tells me that it's going to be a controlled effort. It's nothing like they going out and blew it out of the water, but you can see the damage. There's a huge separation immediately. There's a runner that tried hanging in there and he just realized the pace is too hot. But Kipton is just looking around. He looks comfortable, he's bouncy, but he's looking around at the other players to see if anybody's gonna contend and help him out a little. And the rabbits are committed. They're, they're doing their job, it's looking good. Diego, can you get, because I don't know that we are seeing everybody that we want to see. Tell us exactly who's in this lead pack. So we have defending champ Vincent Cabruto. He's in the mix. He's looking good. And uh, we also have Seifo Tura. Tura, who won two years ago, is in the mix. And then I believe we have the fastest half marathon on the field in the mix, too. He's, he's tucked in the middle right behind Kipton. Yes, Mateko's in there, too. So the main guys are in there chasing it. Diego Estrada keeping his eye on the men's elite field. Thanks so much, Diego. Okay, now we want to check in on the women's wheelchair elite front pack. Let's see if Susanna Scarona is still in the front. Looks like it. Susanna is still up there. It looks like Catherine is right behind her, though. You can see the, the front part of her chair, her front wheel, just off the screen. There she is. Susanna told me that this is part of her plan. She, like Marcel, wants to go hard and wants to go fast. She doesn't want this to come down to a sprint at the end. Catherine is a former track athlete. She's a sprinter, and she has medals from the World Championships and the Paralympic Games in those sprint distances. So she's got that really, really high top speed. Susanna wants to burn her out early. Okay, well, I want to talk a little bit more about that strategy coming up because she's at least holding with her. So let's see what the men's field is looking like and if Mar Marcel Hoog has been able to get that big gap that he says he wants. Let's see, are we checking in with the men? Well, while we're here with the women, let me, oh, here we go. Yeah, Marcel Hoog. Is he by, looks like, he, look, looks like he's by himself. Marcel Hoog looks like he's by himself, like he wants to be. And look how comfortable he is here, just cruising. He's going hard, he's going fast. I talked to Daniel before the race, and he told me he wanted to stay with Marcel. But if Marcel broke away, he wasn't sure he was gonna chase. He wants to make sure he's fresh for New York. So this might be a race for second place on the men's side. Oh, well, that'll be interesting to see. And we don't even know how far back. Now, does that, because we know that, that Daniel Romanchuk is actually a good sprinter. So, I mean, but if, if who gets way ahead, is he just going to be impossible to catch? Marcel's top speed is so high, and he can hold it for so long, it makes him really, really hard to reel back in once he gets ahead. But Yetze Platt and Daniel are together, and they're working together to reel him in. So we'll see. It could be possible. All right, let's check in on the women's elite field and see if anybody's making any moves so far. 
There we are on the, this is the women's elite on the right side of your screen there. Who is in there? It's kind of hard to see. We have a small monitor. Here we go. I see, is this Dababa? That is Dababa right there in the blue shorts and also our defending. Oh, and here. there is Ruth, Ruth Stephen Stephen Geddes. Geddes. Yeah, this is what happened last year. We saw her with some of our elite American men, and we did see a lot of the yep. American men up there that are 211, 210 guys. So this is no different than she's done in the past, and she looks good. She's got her three pacers right there with her. And yeah, Dababa right there behind her. And I saw Sifan Hassan just lurking right behind her within five meters. So yep. she's got her eyes on it. And I think that's what Sifan Hassan had said she wanted to do is just kind of monitor how fast Ruth was going to go, uh, take that all in and maybe follow her. You know, what's interesting is that Dababa and Hassan have pacers that, according to us, they don't really have a time that they're running, but they want to run with this lead pack. Now, we know the time of the pacers that are running with Ruth. But Dababa's pacers and Hassan's pacers are not necessarily giving us time. They're there just to be right with them. Okay, all right. Apparently, this is world record pace yep. right now. So this will be interesting to see. Let's check in with the men's elite and see how they're doing. Who's doing what? Okay. It's hard to see at this vantage point, isn't it? It's like I'm straining my eyes trying to see who's where behind those pacers. Well, I think the main thing to look at here is we have some, again, we have some critical mass that's, that's uh, running together. It looks like we still have at least five, six uh, elite men running ahead, running along with Kiptum. Um, and again, I think that is uh, Kelvin Kiptum on the right with, uh, looks like he's got a head covering of some sort, not the, one, not the baseball hat, but right behind them. So it, he is right there with them. He's encouraging them to run fast. Uh, uh, it looks like I think Bashir Abdi is in that group as well. So we have the major players that yeah. we thought we were going to have. It's early yet. They're rolling along that first mile. They ran at 432, which is well under uh, world record pace. But that's not uh, that. Uh, I mean, you see that a lot in major marathons, especially that first mile as they try to get away from the masses behind them. Now the critical time as they settle down, as we come up, we're coming up on 5K here shortly. We'll be able to get a better read on exactly what pace they have. All right. Well, let's take this opportunity right now to go to a break. We'll be back with more of the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Okay, and I don't, whoever just talked to me in that control. Are they, well, not well, are they not hearing us? Are they not hearing us? Because we're telling them we, we hear them. That's a problem. <laughs> we have you. Yes, we hear you. You hear us? We hear you.
I'm looking forward to everything, but especially I think the moments just before the start is, is very exciting. When you are waiting to the start and then finally there's the gun and you can go. The people that like are on the sidelines that you know are either cheering or have funny signs, um, those are the things that I try to focus on so that I don't focus on too much of like how uncomfortable I am and how much pain I'm going through. Second love I love, one is getting tired. So now me, I, I get stronger, I feel stronger. Drone footage is brought to you by Abbott, life to the fullest. This is the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon as you're taking a look at that spectacular drone footage as we see the athletes. And our split of the men's lead open field, women's lead open that, field, this is Catherine Dubrunner of Switzerland taking the lead now past Susanna Scaroni there. You can see it on your right hand side. And then we're also following on your left lower hand side, Marcel Hoog. Now the elite runners are full on into their race as we see. And as everyone makes their way through the city, they're going to head back into downtown and pass that halfway mark. That is important, that mark, because that is where we find our Matt Rodriguez and Courtney Hall of Chicago today. They are standing by at the Bank of America building at Randolph and Wacker. Hi, guys. Hey, Layla. What's up? You know what, Layla? We are out here with one of our absolute favorite groups, uh, Black Chicago Runners, Sherry right here, yes. leader of this group. We love seeing you year after year, and you bring the energy. Yes. How do, how, do you, how do you keep the energy? <laughs> because it's so exciting seeing everyone perform their goals and meet their goals, and knowing that we've done marathons before, we know what it takes. So having that energy out there to support, yeah. is ideal. It's just key. We love it. Yes. We love it. Yes. I love it. We're already hugging out here. We're hugging. Yeah. Because, oh my, oh my God. as we mentioned, it's it's quite cold. We've been out here since 5 this morning. Yeah. Yeah. You were out here, Sean, at 5 this yeah. morning, correct? About 6. Oh, oh, so, about oh. oh okay. Sean right. slept in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she slept in and said, I'm not getting up. Yeah. I'm not running this morning. So how did you how did you spend last night? Did you get did you party last night? I did a little bit of party. Oh! Okay, okay. okay. And w I love the setup that you have out here. Tell people what you're out here to do. You've got like food and snacks. Okay, so this young lady Cheryl has been, been doing this for about five to six yeah. years and we set up snacks and first aid for all the runners, not just BCR runners, but yeah. anybody that's in need. And we help them out, we rub them down with biofreeze if they need it, give oh, them water, wow. yeah. everything. What'd you say, biofreeze? Biofreeze. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? And that sounds like an anti-aging treatment. Have, wait, you guys have food over there. What, what type of food do you have? Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's it for us. We gotta oh, go. We gotta, I we gotta go. Latrice, a question. Sorry, we okay. gotta go. We gotta wrap at this Listen. point. We'll be here all day. We'll Don't be here worry. all day. <laughs> and an average pace is 14. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he right. negative split. Oh, so. Matt and Courtney always bring us such amazing energy. Thanks to Matt and Courtney. I love Matt. What's biofree? Some anti-aging. Yeah. No, it just keeps the muscles from killing you. <laughs> all right, Amanda, here's Marcel Hoog all by himself. All out on his own, and he is just cruising. He looks super, super comfortable. Okay. At the 10K, Marcel was on course for 123, which will smash his world record, or excuse me, his course record from last year. It's not quite a world record time, but it is well under the course record that he broke last year. And he said that was part of his goal, was to beat his own record. He did say it was part of his goal. And this course, interestingly, we talk about how fast it is and how great the conditions are, but it tends to be slower on the second half for the wheelchair athletes. Ah, interesting. All right, this is the men's elite pack right now. Who do we have in front? Well, we can see Kiptum's right there and that's Mateko. And Mateko. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about Daniel Mateko. Okay, well, interesting. They came through 5K in 1426, which is a little slow, a little off world record pace, but still a very fast time, about a 201 high. Uh, and I think they made a conscious decision, like, let's go. So they took one of the pace setters up with them. And now Kiptum is on the left wearing the black hat. And Mateko, is, this is his debut, but he was the pace setter for Kiptum in London and took him all the way through 30K, through past half marathon, well past half marathon. And so he is a lot of people's dark horse on a guy who could do very well. Because if he can hang with the guy who's run the second fastest marathon ever through uh, well over half of the marathon, then obviously on his 
a full marathon, he's going to do very well. So I think that's why he's up there. He's good friends with Kelvin Kiptum. And right now they're rolling. They're trying to get right back down to world record pace. And again, uh, Kelvin Kiptum, Kiptum is famous for his fast finish. He finished under 60 minutes, 59.45 on the second half. Uh, and he's actually uh, of London, and he's actually ahead of his London pace right now. And he actually said that he likes the back end of the race. He likes it because other people start to get a little bit tired, and this is when he turns on the burners and when he turns on the gas. And he looks like he's really in control here, and he's really directing, wouldn't you say, Ed? Yeah, I think he is, and I think there is so much uh, build up to this. He knew he was fit, and, then, and first and foremost, first he came in, in here and he said, I'm going to go for the course record, 203.45. I think that's, a, that's very realistic. And then he, he, as we pushed him, he didn't want to be painted into a corner of going for the world record. But as the press conference wore on, yeah. he said, well, I'm more fit than London. It's good conditions. Maybe the world record is a possibility. I think so. Ruth Chepengedich is looking pretty good, too, Carrie. She is. She's checking her watch. She's tucking right in behind her pacers. You know, we know that the last foot that she had, she's on 212 pace. So I like this. You know, yes, we're talking about world records, and she's right there, but also course record. And I think if she can just kind of calm herself a little bit. We saw her two years ago go out so fast and then almost come back seven minutes slower in her second half. And then last year, she closed that gap a little bit on running more even paces. Mm -hmm. This year, it'd be nice to see her have more of a race where she can attack that second half rather than just hang on. Yeah, she said she was motivated, that's for sure. All right, we're gonna check out the women's wheelchair race and see what the status is right now. Looks like Susanna's holding on. She does, it looks like it's turning into a real race here. Susanna is so efficient and her technique is so good. It's hard to tell how hard she's working, but I know she is really moving here. And the, now, now Catherine, being a track person, now she, look, look, she's held. She won Berlin. There was that four-woman finish at the end. But how did how does this compare to how Berlin went down? This looks pretty similar to Berlin, but with a smaller pack. And I'm really surprised that there isn't a bigger group of women up here working together. But they are, they're moving, and they are right now well under the course record pace. They're running about on course for a 135, which is the former world record. And that's, that's fast. Impressive. It's impressive. It's averaging close to 17 miles an hour. Wow. All right, so we're not seeing Manuela in there who was in part of that pack. Does it, is it impossible at this point for her to even make her way back? I mean, may, I mean, when you get this kind of gap early on, is it tough to make up that time? When you get the gap early on, it's really, really hard. But Susanna's got some help. She's back there with Tatiana McFadden, who we all know yes. is an incredible American wheelchair athlete. She's won the Chicago Marathon 10 times. She knows this course really, really well. So so I can guarantee they are back there working really hard to close that gap. All right, I'm sure they are. It's so it's so impressive to see this action as it heads out, especially when it looks like there is a race happening even this early on. It's it's always just a lot of fun, and you're always wondering, what is the strategy? What do you think Catherine DeBrenna's strategy is at this moment? I think one of the most impressive things about watching these two women, that's a group of men they're passing right now. That's how fast they're going. Yeah. We are getting closer and closer on the women's field to, to closing that gap to the times that the men are running and it's in big part because of these two they are continuing to push the field to push those paces they're out there to work hard and see how fast they can go and they are moving 17 miles an hour 17 miles an hour and they look like they're just cruising I, they do all right let's check in with our men's elite wheelchair and it's uh, the Marcel Hoog show it is and this pack I'm not sure they're going to be able to close that one yeah. at the 15k Marcel already had a seven minute gap wow. on Getse and you Daniel can't even see them in the camera you can't shot. even see them on the camera shot but it doesn't he like Susanna is so efficient he looks like he is not even working but same thing he's he's moving he's probably going close to 20 miles an hour here oh wow so amazing to see this athleticism is what brings us to the marathon every single year don't go anywhere you know the action is just starting to kick off we'll be back with more of the bank of america chicago marathon
Yeah, she does the good stuff with the uh, with features and stuff. It was a lot of fun. Bank of America Play It Forward Clinic is an event that brings members of the community together to get them energized and excited about an upcoming sporting event, and in this case, the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Bank of America welcomed girls from underserved communities in Chicago to learn more about the sport of running and how athletics can teach valuable life skills as well. Well, what I'm looking forward to is like to have fun and like to make friends and also to like improve my running and my athletic side of me. Notable female athletes share their passion for running and how it has influenced their lives. Running has been such a huge part of my life, so to see and like kind of pay it forward, to share my love and joy of running with others, um, especially young girls, has been everything to me. Teaching young people about self-esteem and building self-esteem, the confidence to do something that they didn't know they could do, the desire, the determination and grit, the passion. Each young girl received a new pair of Nike trainers to help them feel their best when running. It's important to introduce them to this because it's something they may not have access to and it's really great for them to be able to see what's possible. Bank of America Play It Forward Clinic, inspiring the next generation of young girls to explore the benefits of exercise and sport. Okay, that's light at world record pace. <laughs> All right, welcome back. This is the second wave. Let's send it down to Layla. This is the second wave of runners. The anticipation must be just burning up. They're getting ready to take off any second. Here we go. And they are off. All right, so these are folks that are probably runners that run pretty regularly. They're going to be doing a decent amount of time. I mean, how do you think they're feeling? You guys, I know you guys all have extensive experience as runners, but you know people who run on the weekend. For oh, the for sure. Part. I mean, that's me now, right? I right. used to run really fast, but now I'm just trying to get out there with three kids and working full time. And right. that's a lot of these athletes, but they are thinking about races that they want to qualify or setting new personal bests. And uh, yeah, a lot goes into this. You know, some people are running up to 50, 60 mile weeks and then they're working, you know, 40, 50 hour weeks. So uh, it's serious for them, but also it's super fun. People are cheering and laughing and meeting new friends along the way. Absolutely. And, and, on, a lot of, and on a cold morning like this, it's just nice to get going because yeah. they will generate enough body heat now to feel good because they, you want to be cold on the starting line, but they've been having to stand there a little extra long watching that first wave go out. Now they are released. Now they can warm up and they're, they're happy. They're working towards goals that they've been working on. Some of these people for six months, 12 months, and it's a great release once that gun goes off. Layla Rahimi is down there near all these runners. Layla, what's the feeling down there? 
Yeah, hi, Marion. We are at the finish line, and we are just a few blocks south of where all of those runners begin at Stone. You take the advice from the coach who is in charge and talked about Kevin Jeans, our storm, time, storm team meteorologist here at NBC5, wanting that, that chilly temperature to start because it's right. going to sustain you. Can we Should we just start running now? Because, I mean, it, spectating, it's like, all right, it's cold. Yes. But for from the runner's standpoint, this is like this is absolutely perfection. That's what we've been talking about all morning. We've got the hand warmers, guys. I we've know. Got We're wimps. At least I am. <laughs> we've got a couple of sprinkles. That's been it. I think for the most part, this has been dry, which is fantastic. We've just had the clouds from this little weak storm system that kind of brushed by us. But uh, the temperatures have been in the mid-40s this morning. And it feels about the same as what the temperature is because the wind is only around three miles per hour. So we get a, a light wind today, mostly cloudy, very little rain, a couple of drops, a few sprinkles. That, that's really about it. But through the course, we're going to be in the mid-40s, warming up to about 50 degrees over the next couple of hours. So really the temperatures are going to hold, kind of hold steady and uh, the wind's not going to be too strong either. So outside of a couple of sprinkles, staying dry and, and this is great. A week ago, I keep saying this, it was 87 degrees. So you think about all the training that goes involved for months on end, you don't know what you're going to get in Chicago in October. Thankfully, the marathon is this weekend and not last weekend when it was close to 90. So fortunate to have that weather cooperating. We'll also keep an eye on the flags here at the finish line that are representative of the countries, of people who are participating in the race. So those right now, still. So we've got that going for us wind-wise as well. Now let's go to Jen DeSalvo, who is standing by with a runner from Bank of America. Hi, Jen. Thanks, Layla and Kevin. Yeah, we're here at the start line. I'm with Ashley Graham from Bank of America, also a girls on the run coach, just like myself. But Ashley, you just did something incredible. You just finished all 50 states, a marathon in each state. Why did you do that? Oh, that's a great question. I started when I was much younger before life took off, but it was a wonderful way to see the country and get to experience it. And of course, I'm back here for the Bank of America Marathon in Chicago. And that's one of my favorites, so I'm really excited about today. Now, when it comes to this course, it's flat, it's a great day, but there's still going to be a ton of challenges. What is your biggest challenge and how are you going to overcome that? Yeah, mile 18 is where it starts to get really hard for me. Got to push through, distract my mind, use the crowds. Everyone in the crowd is my best friend today, and I'm going to have them help carry me to the finish line. Uh, now, I did mention she is a fellow girls on the run coach, just like myself. What do you love about being able to inspire the next generation of kids? Oh, I love that program is just such a wonderful program to build confidence. And this is an experience that they can see. This is going to be them one day. So I'm excited to be here showing them that I can do it and take it back to my girls because one day they're going to be out here too. Well, thank you so much for stepping aside and giving us your time. Now it's time to go nail a race. You going to PR? We're going to PR. Let's see. We're going to finish. We're going to finish. Yes. <laughs> I'm Jen DeSalvo at the start line. We're going to send this back over to you. I know. Look at you, Jen, pushing her. Are you going to PR? Are you going to PR? No, she's going to finish. She's got her goals. Thanks so much. Jen is our resident runner. She's our ultra marathoner. Let's check out the elite women right now. Ruth Chepengedish is apparently looking pretty good, Carrie. She is. Okay, I want to give you guys this time. Okay. 2.11.53 is the world record that Tagis Asefa just ran two weeks ago in Berlin in 2023, okay. two weeks ago. Now, we just came through 10K, and Ruth Chepengedich, our defending champion, going for her three-peat, is on 2.11.06 pace. What? So she's well under, and guess who's right behind her? Sifan Hassan, who oh, we wow. have not mentioned. She is a three-time Olympic medalist. That's including two golds. She's coming off of the World Championships just six weeks ago. But get this. In her debut marathon, she went ahead and won the whole thing in London this last spring. So a uh, phenomenal athlete both on the track now transitioning a little bit to the roads, not necessarily making the full jump where she's going to just be a marathoner, but she's right here tucked right in behind our defending champion. She sure is. And what's amazing, it's only been six weeks since the mm -hmm. world championship. So she's coming off this track uh, background. She she raced so many races at the world championship. She's had six weeks to kind of get her base back. She's been up in Utah. I've seen her a few times up in uh, Deer Valley, uh, Park City area. Doing on some great workouts and I think her mission as we talked to her was just to run with Ruth for as long as she can and she's looking very comfortable right now. She also talked about at the press conference that she was using the worlds in Budapest sort of as yeah. training to keep herself in shape for this marathon and she has such a great attitude she's just like I'm learning everything I'm doing right now is I'm trying to figure out what a marathon 
run is, because she's only done the one. Well, in London, she ran 218.33. She stopped twice to stretch her quad. I know, isn't that crazy? She missed her fueling. She was coming off of Ramadan, where she actually had to train through that fasting all day. Um, you know, there was a lot of factors going into why that race wouldn't go very well for her. Mm -hmm. And it didn't actually. And but she, she went and won it. And she said, I was thinking to myself, am I crazy for running this long of a race? <laughs> and she's not crazy. She is just one of the best we've ever seen. Well, I think she's going to be amazing. And I think she learned so much from that first effort, too. You know, I've come in here running her second one, uh, even though she hasn't had quite the build up as before. She, she did that speed work, you know, we're getting ready and running the world championships. I think any time that I raced, if I could run shorter, faster races than when I got into the marathon pace, it felt so easy, so comfortable relative to those track races that I think these, these early miles, she's feeling very comfortable. Yeah, we're learning a little bit about the difference and adding that track element to the marathon piece has really kind of been a bit of a trend. Let's check in with the men right now. Kelvin Kiptum, let's see if he's still holding on to that lead. And it, yes, it looks yep. like he is, and he's still with Daniel Mateko as well. They're yeah, right and, and the, two, the two of them came through 10K at 28.42, which is right at world record pace. Uh, they're running. They have a great rhythm going. They've got uh, Ronald Kirui is their pace setter, and they're communicating freely. That's the, and, and again, Kiptum is calling the shots. He is. He's you been in that tell. position on the left uh, with uh, Mateko, who is, uh, who, who is new at this event, but has been a pace setter in the past uh, mile eight they ran in 440 so that's a little they, they want to be hitting about uh, 436 per mile that would give us a world record pace but again like I said through 10k they were right at exactly at 2842 world record pace and there's going to be some uh, fluctuation by a few seconds here a few seconds there as they go in and out of the wind okay and then once again Marcel who all by himself Marcel has picked up the pace. Yes. Wow. Yeah. He still looks super comfortable, but you can see his cadence, how fast his arms are moving. It's He's sped up a little bit. Wow. At 10K, he was on pace to run 123. He is down to 122, so he must be feeling good. Wow. That's, Cruising on his own. And that's going to be a course record, right? That will be a course record that's three minutes under the course record he set last year. Oh, wow. All right, let's check in with Stefan Holt. He is just beyond the finish line, and uh, pretty soon, Stefan, you're going to be seeing Marcel Luke. <laughs> Hey there, we're here on Columbus Drive, just about 300 yards away from the finish line where those runners are going to come through shortly. I wanted to show you what sweet victory looks like. This is the hardware, the medal you're handed as soon as you cross the line, the 45th year of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. You see the 4-5 there in the six-pointed Chicago star. Also cool on the band, notice they have the neighborhoods that the runners will go through along this course. 26 miles, you'll be handed one of these, and you will also get one of these thank you bridget this is one of the heat sheets that is to keep the runners warm after they've been exerting all that energy they can trap their body heat in one of these it's also lightweight they can breathe you can get some water to rehydrate replenish all that sweat you just let out over 26 miles grab a banana there are 72,000 chiquita bananas that have been donated for the runners to have a snack and you're thinking what are they going to do with all the leftovers those will be donated after the race to the greater chicago food depository right beyond this is the medical Tent. Anyone who has bumps, bruises, strains, they can go be seen by an EMT or a doctor. And just beyond that, the best part, the 27th mile, that's where you can finally get a cold glass of beer to recover after this 26-mile race. We'll have much more from the zone just beyond the finish line in just a little bit. Back to you. So that's what happens. They're going to be wanting those wraps, those bananas, and maybe even some biofreeze at the medical tent. Thanks so much, Stefan. All right, we're checking in now. I believe we've got a look at the women's wheelchair. And is this the Susanna and Catherine? This is still together. Susanna and Catherine together. I've been seeing Susanna up in the front a lot, so she must be feeling really, really good. Susanna's a very technical racer, and so she told me before the race that she's looking to capitalize on some of the trickier parts of this course, some of those turns. She thinks that that's going to be her advantage to get ahead of Catherine. She's slowed down a little bit. She's on pace to run a 136.11 right now, but that is still three minutes under the course record of 139.15. It's an old course record, too. It's been standing since 2011 here. Excuse me, 2017 here. All right. Well, we'll get back in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. We've got more of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon coming up right after this.
uh, iconic distance. You, you are on the road, you are in, in great cities. I chose the marathon distance because that is just what my body is made to do. It just feels so good. Training and racing, that's just, I just feel like I'm flying figure out how far can I go, how fast can I go. Um, and so I think it, uh, you know, that, that's a part of uh, why I, I really have uh, enjoyed marathons is, uh, is you know, I get to, to push myself. All right, there's another look at our beautiful city, parts of Grant Park, you can see the Art Institute, parts of Maggie Daly Park and Millennium Park and thousands of runners getting geared up and ready to go to try and take on the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. The drone sponsored by Abbott, life to the fullest. I love these drone shots. They make me feel like I'm just right in the middle of everything. All right, let's check in with the men's and women's elite racers and see where the race is right now. On the right-hand side, Ruth Chepengedich looking really good, tucked in right there behind her pacers. And Kipton. Still with Manteco and his pacer. Is it, what's the deal with his pacer? He, his pacer is like, can't keep, can't keep up here. Yeah, well, what happened is there was some discussion beforehand saying 60-40 was a little hot for a lot of them. So it looks like they only had one pacer, which is a little bit of a disadvantage. But I've just been told they came through 15K at 43.09. 43.09, that's, that's right at world record pace. Just a little couple seconds off of world record pace. But quite frankly, I'm not that concerned because uh, Kelvin Kiptum, is a great negative split runner. In other words, he runs the second half faster than the first half. And I, I'll, I'll, I really think it's kind of smart on his part to leave a little bit in the bank so that he can finish strong. Also, we, we're not seeing them yet. We're going to have a, a camera go back after the, after the wheelchair's finished. But the Americans are running together. Galen Rupp, Connor Mance, uh, Daniel Mesfun, who's a new American, uh, uh, Eritrean, but he got his citizenship last uh, November. They are running right at 208.10 place. So okay. we'd like to see that. They're running in a 10th uh, place right now. Uh, Mance came through 45.11 through 5. Uh, 15K, 45.11, which again puts them. Um, Oh, puts him right solidly a little under 208. So that's good. He's got some critical mass running with the Americans together. And then these guys up front, they're, they've dialed it in. They only have one pace setter, and that's Ronald Karui. But they're right at world record pace. And again, Kiptum is a fast finisher. It's Mateko who's running right behind with the blue headband, who uh, is, is debuting. And he's run very fast oh. for the half marathon. And so We've got a little break. It looks like, look, Safan Hassan is... Hanging right with Ruth Chepengedich. She just went and picked up her bottle there. And she talked a little bit about Carrie, how she didn't feel like she was trained well enough or knew well enough to pick up her water and hydrate the way she wanted to in London. So how key is getting your nutrition as you're on the, ra on the road? It's huge in this event, 26.2 miles. You have to be able to do that. And so, yes, yeah, she missed some, some of her fueling. She wasn't fueling so much through Ramadan. Ramadan. She was able to do that the last couple weeks before London. But, yeah, this is interesting. Now watch how long they're fueling out here right now. These early miles, it's so important to get in your goo packs, to get in the right... Um, you know, carbohydrate, sugar, all the things that you need yourself. Because even though it's cool today, they're burning through all of that right. in these early stages, and they want to be able to have a little at the end. And you can see Sifan Hassan has her own personal uh, pace setter, Reed Buchanan, mm. who I believe is the blonde guy who's yep. hanging right there with the white singlet with her. Oh. And so you'll see at the water stuff, he's not handing her bottles. He needs to take his own bottle to sure. hydrate well himself. But he's looking back, he's checking, he's making sure that he can block the wind for Sifan Hassan. Uh, and and we'll, we'll see if they can keep close to Ruth. Can we just give a little shout out right now to our Americans, though, because we have such great names and a lot of action that's happening back behind about two minutes behind at 10k they were still on that 219 pace emily sisson our american record holder from the u.s she was in there with emma bates and then molly seidel let's give her a big shout out she's back she's the bronze medalist from the tokyo games in the the marathon for the u.s she's struggled the last couple years with injuries and some other things and she's back here and she's super excited she was only 30 seconds behind those top two americans we're going to get in there and get a look at the americans as soon as this elite wheelchair race is completed which should be happening in the next oh few minutes or so especially with marcel who they are getting close and marcel is continuing to hold this pace the gap behind him keeps growing it was three minutes it was five minutes it was seven minutes he is now almost 10 minutes ahead oh, wow. of the chase pack he's 
past the 25K, and he is on pace to run 122.10, right, so which is course three record. minutes under his course record from last year. All right, so he's doing exactly what he wanted to do. He wanted to be this far ahead. He, he wanted to be this far ahead, and he has had a history of dominant performances over the past two years, and it's raised some really important questions about technology when we're talking about wheelchair racing. Marcel has a top-of-the-line chair. He has an entire team dedicated to researching aerodynamics, shaving off millimeters here and there to get him in the best possible position. And that is a, that's a team, and that is a, a level of support that a lot of the other athletes, that none of the other athletes have. And they don't have access to it, too, because that's a lot of money. It, is a, a, lot of it is a ton alone. of money. It is a ton of support. And it's, it's a tricky situation to be in. It's pushing the sport forward, but also it's pushing Marcel really far ahead of the rest of the field. All right. Thanks so much, Amanda. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't go away. We have more of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon right after this. World Marathon Majors discussion. Okay. Oh, yeah, that makes a difference. Sorry. back on this 45th running of the Bank of, Ameri of Bank of America Chicago Marathon as our drone footage is sponsored by Abbott. Life to the fullest, just a beautiful view of downtown Chicago today. I'm Layla Rahimi, joined by Kevin Jeans, our meteorologist here at NBC Chicago, as we continue to enjoy the warm-up today and keep an eye on what could be happening as far as the weather is concerned for this Some, race. The sun's trying to fight its way out now, which we're all kind of seeing, too, from uh, you know the runners. And, and it's still cloudy. It's mostly cloudy, but... I think we're going to start to see some of these clouds break up a little more here over the next hour. So the sky's getting a little brighter. It's 48 degrees right now. We stayed in the 40s. The wind chill only three degrees below the actual temperature. So it feels like it's 45. The wind might increase slightly, but I think it's going to hover around 10 miles per hour as we uh, get to the, the latter part of the morning hours and, and then into this afternoon, too. But a couple of sprinkles here and there. For the most part, it's been a dry morning, which has been fantastic. It has just been mostly cloudy we've had maybe a couple of sprinkles and and that's it not a big deal it's just been about the, the chill which again is great for the runners with uh, temperatures now getting into the upper 40s and the wind not too strong just around uh, six seven miles per hour right now yes i keep looking at the flags that are stationed here at the finish line at the stands just, just to make sure still. if they're moving 
Chicago Weather 101, and right now they are still, so we can't confirm that. Might be a little bit of a headwind as they finish this race. We are very much looking forward to what should be an amazing finish here at the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. It is an Abbott World Marathon major. That is very important because of the significance of these races. As you can see, there's the list of the Abbott World Marathon major races. It's a series that began in Tokyo on March 5th, April, a busy month when you see Boston and London. And then there, the World Athletics Championships. As you continue to see the champions in the Abbott World Marathon majors, they are determined through a point system. It's taken from a maximum two qualifying races over a series. There is also a six star, star system and so far more than 12,000 runners have completed all six of those races. For more, you can visit abbottwmmglobalrunclub.com. As we take a look at a group of men's and women's runners, Marion, who are no strangers to these Abbott World Marathon majors, especially after the incredible finish we saw in Berlin on September 24th. Could be in for another one today. No doubt about it. They earn some big points and they earn big money as they, the, whoever gets that win for the uh, Abbott Marathon major takes home quite a purse, six figures. All right, let's check in. You, They're both looking pretty good. You can see that with the women, Ruth Chepengedich and Sifan Hassan are right next to each other. Kelvin Kiptum is with the guy who paced him in London, Daniel Makedo. Impressive races both sides, guys. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to say it's it, it's something that we kind of both thought was going to happen, right? I mean, we know that Mateko has led and paced, but we know he's super good. So mm -hmm. even though he's a dark horse, lots of people are talking about him. But on the women's side, I think the two heavy hitters, the two that people were talking about, are right there working together, but also racing super hard. Hey, we've got Kira D'Amato. She is right in front of Ruth Chepengedich and Stefan Hassan. Let's get her take on what they look like from the from the roads directly in front of them. Kira, what's your thoughts? It is actually an interesting turn of events. Savan Hassan has just taken over the lead. Ruth has led every step right up until about 11 miles, and now Savan has latched on to Ruth's pacers. Uh, both women are looking pretty, pretty smooth. Ruth looks like she's starting to show a little bit of signs of struggling, but um, it's just been incredible just seeing all the people along the course, especially women and young girls that are just going crazy for They can just feel the magic happening. Back to you. We can see the magic happening. What does it say to you, Carrie, that Safana Hassan has passed Ruth right now? I mean, obviously, she's feeling good. She just went through in that last mile in 5.01, which is that 2.11 pace. Like, she's just locked in. But she has her personal pace setter right there, Reed Buchanan, on the side. And I think that one thing that she said, she's going to take chances because she doesn't know this race yet. And she's okay with that. You know, she had kind of a tough upbringing. You know, she she switched countries and she has kind of this story. And she said to us, it's it's bigger than this running thing is not life or death, right? right this right. is just fun for her and she wants to see what she's made of. So in these early stages of her marathon career, she's gonna go take some chances. She's curious. That was a big word that she used. She says she wants to learn. She's yeah. gonna use this one to learn. Uh, this is new territory for Ruth Chepengedis because usually at Chicago in her wins, she's been running all alone with the pace setters at this point in time. She's run, and in fact, in in one case, she was ahead. She ran past her pace setters at the mile eight mark. So to have another a female in Safan Hassan running there shoulder to shoulder may bring out the best in her. Or it can also also throw you right yeah. you know when you're not used to and especially for Ruth who's been here in Chicago the last two years and dominated all alone mm -hmm. it can throw you when you have another competitor right there sort of dictating as she is right now what's going on all right let's check in with men's wheelchair because Marcel Hoog is getting close to the finish and and he looks good he is getting close he's got to be 10 minutes away maybe even less than that and he, as an athlete this is the position you want to be in that sprint to the line hurts so if you can put yourself in a position Position where you've got a gap and you know that you can just hold steady and roll through the line that's good so Marcella is feeling really good right now he did the work early 
he worked hard, he broke away, and now he's feeling strong. He's but confident. He's going to be done with this race in about 10 minutes or so, a little, little more than 10 minutes, about 12 minutes or so. So we'll check back in with him. In the meantime, let's check in with the women's wheelchair pack. Right there at the front are Catherine DeBrunner and Scala. Now we've got a little switch. We do. This is, is the Anna first Hill time. First. The first time I've seen Catherine up in the front. And in wheelchair racing, you actually get a, a huge energy saving advantage by sitting behind someone. Ah. Someone's blocking the wind for you, but depending on the direction of the wind, the conditions, sometimes it can be up to a 30% energy savings. Wow. So it's great to be in the front. You're in control. You're the one pushing the pace. But if you are, you're tucked in there, you're moving at the same speed, but putting in a lot less work. Well, they just switched places. So do you, what are you, what's the strategy here? What are we dealing with? I mean, I know Susanna loves, she loves to push hard. She loves to burn people out. She, like Marcel, thinks that she can go faster for longer than anybody else can, but it's a risky move yeah. because you can't see what the person behind you is doing. And Catherine looks really, really comfortable back there. You can look as Susanna's picking it up. You can see the cadence of their arms. Susanna's moving really quickly. Catherine's coasting right now, tucked in behind her, which means Susanna's working a lot harder to hold that pace than Catherine is. Ah. She's saving a little energy, which means if they're together at the end, she might have a little extra for that kick at the end, for that sprint. And she is a sprint. So we'll let's check in now with the men's and women's elite and the field looks the same and they look pretty good. Although look at you can see Ruth has mo moved her way in front of Safan a little bit. Is her experience starting to factor in, do you think, here? You know, I like where Ruth is right now. She has this triangle yeah. of guys in front of her. Regardless of where the wind is, she has that triangle. And then Safan is probably just tucked in, not feeling much of it as we don't, you know, there's not much wind. But I do like where they're at. And the men came through 20K, 57.39. That's 201.37 pace, just a little above a world record pace. But again, we're seeing that their pace setter now is really not setting the pace. It's really Kelvin Kiptum who is setting the yeah. pace. The pace setter is just holding on for dear life. We also got an update on the American men. Good news for the American men because they were running at about 207.05. That's Galen Rupp, Connor Matz. Sammy Chalanga has joined uh, Mespin. And then Clayton Young is about 15 seconds back. All right, they're in good pace to get that little Olympic spot, that Olympic standard. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more of the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Welcome back to the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. And in this case, at this moment, the Marcel Hoog Show. 
He is nowhere near his competitors and on his way to a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back win here in Chicago. He is indeed defending course champion, defending course record holder, coming in, which unless something wild happens, exactly. we're expecting a, another win here and another course record for Marcel. Nine minutes behind him is the chase pack. And we wow. talked earlier about Yetzi Platt and how he has been moving up slowly but surely. He's a 10 second gap on Daniel Romanchuk right now for that second place finish. So who knows? Maybe he's the next one up there to close that gap on Marcel. Wow. That's some big news right there. All right. Let's check in with the men's elite because we're losing a pacer. It looks like he's already out of there. Well, they came through halfway at 6048. Good for them because that was the pace. They wanted to come through at 6040 and considering they only had one rabbit to do it. I think Kipton and uh, Mateko did a very good job keeping that pace going. I'm excited. I'm enthused at this because we know that Kiptum is a fast finisher, and if he finishes like he has in his past and only two marathons, we are going to see world record time. But there's plenty of racing to go, and I'm impressed that Mateko, who has been his holding pace setter in the best, is just going shoulder to shoulder. Now, it feels like it feels like Kelvin Kiptum is really, really in charge, though, here. He, he looks so confident and you can kind of tell that Mateko is, is doesn't have that same level of confidence. Well yeah and I think it's the fact that Mateko was kind of his Sherpa in the past. He was the guy that worked in setting the pace for him in the past so I think he is deferring to him. We uh, also see that Kiptum has lost the hat. He's the taller runner. He's wearing a hat early on so he has definitely warmed things up. Also got word uh, that the Americans came through halfway 103.21 and so that's uh, what 206.40 pace which is a really good pace for them. Let's go back to the start line because we have another wave of runners that are about to take off. This is their run of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Wave three is underway. And they are off. All right, so this is the next. Again, these are the folks that are, they're maybe weekend runners as well. Maybe not quite as quick as that second wave, but they're loving running just as much. A lot of charity runners out here at this point, too. People are raising money for causes that are near and dear to their heart. When you're running for one of those charities, you actually get to get in there. This is one of those strategies to actually get a chance to do this race. But it's also a great chance to, to raise money for a cause that is important to you and, and, and give back in your own way and take care of yourself as well. And when there's 47,000 people in a race, it's safe to start it in waves like this. Yeah. And in, in all probability, uh, we're going to see our millionth runner probably, probably coming from this, this wave. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. that's right. So be excited out there. Your favorite runner that you're watching right now might be the one. I think it's the guy in orange. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, the I guy in the orange. redhead. He's, yeah, the, he's the millionth guy. <laughs> I can tell. I think it's the one in the Superman costume. Uh, where's the Superman <laughs> costume? I know. There's always one. We're always just seeing <laughs> costumes right around now. All right, now we've also got a look at the women's wheelchair elite race. Susanna Scaroni and Catherine DeBruna are just hanging together like best friends. They are. They're both still looking strong, and this is definitely a race between the two of them. They're four to five minutes ahead of the chase pack, which okay. is Manuela Shar and Tatiana McFadden, and it's, it's going to be the two of them. If Susanna wants to break away, if she wants to be on her own at the end, she needs to make a move soon. She's running out of time. Otherwise, it's going to come down to that finishing sprint. Oh, boy. And we've already seen how impressive uh, Catherine DeBruna can be in the sprint finishes. Catherine's top speed is very, very impressive. She gets all of that from her experience coming off of the track. This is a little bit of a tricky situation they're in right now, though. They've caught up to some of the men that started before them. So you can see there's, there's a big group of athletes on the road with them right now. Now, does that, it, it, I know, we, we know that they are the, the best of the best. Does that start to, does that, does that hurt them when they're having to maneuver around other wheelchairs? There's just a lot of crowds and congestion on the road. And instead of being able to focus for Susanna and Catherine, being able to focus just on each other, they're also watching what everyone else is doing, making sure that they're not cutting in ahead of them, taking those lines. And if someone's passing you, obviously, you want to make sure that, you're giving them the right of way, but sometimes the athletes come up so fast, you're not even aware that they're there. Right, okay, let's take a look. We have Ruth Chepengedich still right behind her pacers. Yep, she's looking pretty good. She looks good. She just went through the half marathon at 105.42, so she's on 211.28 pace, still under world record pace. 
and Safan Hassan six seconds behind at the wow. half marathon. All right, don't go anywhere. It's getting exciting. We're going to have the wheelchair finish when we come back for the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Don't go away. Representing uh, for their club, which has more than a hundred members, we're going to shout out some of the people who are running this morning. So, who do we have right here? Right here, we have Tunji. All right, and we have Sarah. He's a five-time Paralympian, marathon world record holder once. Back five seconds. And we are back with the Bank of America Chicago Marathon, and you are looking at the silver bullet himself, Marcel Hoog. He is just a couple of minutes away from the finish line. And Amanda, no one's anywhere close. No one is close. We're less than two minutes away. He's getting close to making those last two turns to head into the finish line. And one of the most impressive things about watching Marcel push is he's like a machine. He is so steady and so comfortable. You can see how low he stays while he's pushing. Anytime you're moving up and down, that's lost energy. You want to make sure everything you're doing is power going from your arms directly into the wheels. There is no one that does it better than him. And he keeps pushing on the wheels too. I mean, you look, this might be a slight incline right here. I'm not quite sure, but he just, it, I can't even imagine what his arms must be feeling like right now. His stroke is so long and that's one of the, that's a, the hallmark of a great wheelchair athlete. When you get that lift off the back, you get the power coming in. And here he is coming in. Mount Roosevelt. Yep, first of two turns coming up the hill and you can hardly even tell he's slowing down. He's that steady. This is the, t this is the, they all know this hill. This is the hill right before the turn. Some runners are motivated by it because they know what's coming. The finish line is right around the corner and others dread it. But this is the final moment. And you're right, he doesn't look like it's even causing him any strain whatsoever. When we heard from Marcel in the press conference, he said he wanted to be alone here. He didn't want to have to sprint up this hill. He didn't want to have to worry about the turn at the top and the downhill to the finish. He wanted to know the race was his before he hit this point and he, he did it. He pulled it off and he knows. And he's going to break his course record. He's going to be in under 123 and that's, what, that's his own course record. He's breaking his own course record by almost three minutes here right now. That is absolutely incredible. And look, it looks like he didn't even break a sweat. <laughs> I know he's working hard, but there is your champion for 2023, the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Marcel Hugh, your men's wheelchair champion, once again. An amazing performance. I don't know what his final time ended up being, but we know 
he broke his own course record. He did. I think I heard 122.43 as the unofficial time. His former course record set last year was 125.20. Wow. Two and a half minutes. Wow, amazing. All right, let's check in with the men's elite. We'll come back and talk to Marcel Hoog shortly. But now let's take a look at the men's elite runners. Pacer is gone already, been gone for a while. It's yeah. the same two. Pacer dropped off a little bit before half. We have uh, Kelvin Kiptum on the left, Daniel Mateko on the right. Mateko will be going into new uncharted territory because the furthest he's raced before is 30K. The men are approaching 25K at this point in time, and they are still firmly right at world record pace. Uh, this is good news because Kelvin Kiptum is a fast finisher. Uh, we know that he, he, can, he can bring it at the end of a race. Um, I'm excited to see how Mateko fares over this last half because he is so, uh, so good at the half marathon. We know he has great speed. He has run uh, broken 59 minutes five times wow. in the half marathon so he is also capable of running very fast uh, and perhaps over the last half um, Kelvin Kiptum kind of set a, a record of its own of his own back in London when he finished the last half in 5945 at the London Marathon which is the fastest uh, half marathon that's ever been run in the course of a marathon so we know that what he's capable of and I think it's really nice to have these two guys running shoulder to shoulder because they they've done a lot of work too, together right? yes yes they they do and and I think they're very confident and I think uh, right now Mateko is just uh, learning a lot with every step that he's going and we have to say that Kelvin Kipton has said I like to be Ahead, I like to break away at 30K. So we we know that he's still got a lot left in the tank. The end of the race is the, the, the space that he likes. Well, the exciting thing is he said that he was more fit than he was before London. Mm. Uh, he's had to train through the rainy season down in Kenya. So there's been the, the roads actually get muddy and it's hard to find good places to run. But he said despite that, he had a really good training cycle. Uh, and, and I think he's looking very good right now, running very smooth. He looks so confident. One of the things that I love about Calvin Kipton, I mean, he smiles when he talks about running. Yeah. He just loves it. He listens to Sean Paul. He says they get a little bit of that little yeah. extra. That little you know, reggae going on. Yeah. They did just run 440, so if they want to stick to that world record pace, that's 436. So they, you know, you're going to have some ups and downs, and Ed, you know this better than anyone, but going through a marathon, you have all kinds of different things. It's almost like a lifetime, right? You have all kinds of ups and downs, and here we see that now. We see it. Safan Hassan, She's back, way up back on yeah. the shoulder of Ruth Chep and Gedich. And this is, it's hard to believe this is only her second marathon. All right, we're, we're going to check back in with the men's and women's elite runners shortly, but first we want to go to the finish line. Alex Maragos with our champion, Marcel Hoog. Alex. Thank, thank you, Marion. An amazing race today, earning the course record. How did that feel? Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, I was feeling great in the morning. Uh, I tried to break the record, but uh, by so much, it's it's crazy, incredible, so happy. You smashed your course, your own course record, by almost three minutes. You won five of the majors last year. You've won, I think, your fourth major already this year in 2023. Have you ever raced better in your life than you're racing right now? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, definitely, it's at the moment, it's crazy. I mean, to, to break the course record here is, yeah. It shows that I'm in great shape. What do you think as you look forward to, again, some of the majors that are coming up still and then 2024 with the Olympics? What is your eye on? You've already won many medals. How do you stay in such good shape going into such a competitive field ahead in 24? Yeah, I'm still uh, very motivated uh, because I, I believe that uh, I can still do better times, records, uh, doing more medals. <laughs> So uh, I'm still hungry and still motivated. Just on, also just doing the sport. It's my passion. I, I really love it. And uh, yeah, I mean, to do a marathons like this here in Chicago is just amazing. It's uh, it's a huge motivation to see the crowd here and this atmosphere is just incredible. And I was gonna say, take us out on the course today. You said you you don't like sprint finishes, but you had nobody around you. It seemed like halfway through. How did you build such a powerful start and how was that the key for you? Yeah, I was just trying to, to go uh, fast from the beginning because I was trying to, to break the course record. So I was uh, taking the lead and then didn't look back, but uh, after some case, I, I looked back and nobody there. And so 
yeah, I just try to keep up my pace. Thank you so much, Marcel. Appreciate it. Marcel Huka, champion again. Back to you guys. Including who? A little two box. All right, thanks so much, Alex. We're going to check back in now with the women's wheelchair to see if it's the Scarona and Catherine race. And yes, it is. It still is. It's the two of them together. I was watching a little earlier, and it looked like they had slowed down, and it looks like they're slowing down the pace a little bit now. It's getting technical. Mm -hmm. And they've got some other, they've got men in here that they're having to navigate because they're starting to, to, to pace them. So, I, like you talked about before, having to not just focus on your own race, but also having to now concentrate on the other people around you. And it's actually illegal in International Paralympic Committee rules, World Paraathletics, for the women to draft off of the men. So they have to make sure that they are steering clear of those men, because that could be a disqualification if they get too close. Is that right? That is an interesting fact. So how are they looking in your mind right now? They are definitely, this is tactical now. They're next to each other. No one wants to be up in front. Susanna's watching Catherine to see what she's doing, tucking back in there a little bit, but they've slowed the pace down and that's okay. They're still a couple minutes under the course record and it feels funny because I'm cheering them on to break <laughs> my course record. <laughs> You're right. But they're, that's what they're doing right now. They're waiting. Susanna was hoping to be alone at this point and she's not yet. So she knows this is gonna come down to a sprint. She knows that Catherine has that speed advantage, but Susanna is a great climber. So she's gonna to try to rest up a little bit and hold on to as much as she can. Okay, she just made a, a, a motion with her hand. I don't know what she was trying to say there. Susanna did. Maybe trying to get some, some distance, I'm not sure, but. It's hard to tell. She also, all wheelchair racers wear gloves on their hands and they're a little bit difficult to see because they only cover the front part of the hand, but you can see the strap on the back of Catherine's. Okay. Um, it's a great design, though, because you can pull your fingers out and stretch them out a little bit. So I know Susanna's had some wrist injuries earlier this year, and it's on that left side. So she might be stretching out her arm, kind of trying to stretch out her fingers a little bit, getting ready for that tough climb, taking advantage of this slowdown right now. Love hanging, having you here, Amanda, giving us all that good insight intel. All right, let's check in with the women's elite right now. Yeah, you I'm can just see they're in the bottom box there, and now we're going full, and it looks like it's still Sifan Hassan and Ruth Chepengedich, and it, it looks is. like Sifan's coming, uh, getting a little ahead. Yeah, it looks like she took the lead again here. They are on 211.40 pace, so they're still under world record wow. pace. They went through 25K, which for those of us in America who like miles a little bit better, it's 15 and a half miles, 118.06. So they are still running hard, but kind of playing a little cat and mouse, aren't they? You know, where one takes the lead for a little bit and then once one kind of settles in. But yeah, it is definitely fun. The chase pack is about two minutes back. So they have a two minute lead right now on all the ladies that are chasing them. Very, very interesting to see. I, I, I love watching Sifan Hassan, just having talked to her and seen her energy and just knowing this is her second marathon and that she's got such a great attitude about it. It's really exciting to just watch her. And then Ruth too, who I know is so motivated. I think she's almost more motivated to have someone close to her like this. Cause she was listening to Stefan <laughs> and people talking to Stefan and how has she just won London. Oh yeah, I'm sure she watched her cause you know, Stefan Hassan ran in Budapest six weeks ago, 24 plus thousand meters. I mean, 24,500 meters on the track, three races. And you know, she's a phenom. She is, all right. We'll be back in just a moment for more the Bank of America Chicago Marathon Women's Wheelchair Finish coming up. for a really long time now. I think we all look forward to it. We love welcoming. Again, Marcel Hook.
Uh, last year, both, well, both 21 and 22 at the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. We have a women's wheelchair. I love the Chicago Marathon. You know, I think this is my fifth time running it, um, so I keep coming back, running through all the neighborhoods, and just feeling the love from the, the running community and, and the community of Chicago as a whole is really special. Tu again are amazing. They are supportive on the street, cheering on you. It's just the city itself gets so excited about the race, and I love that. I love the city. I love to race Chicago. We love you too, Kelvin Kipton, but we're going to check in right now with the women's wheelchair lead race here. We've got the same two ladies we've been watching all this time. We've got Susanna Scaroni back up at the front again. Looks like she's picked up the pace a little bit. They want that course record. We talked about Marcel Hoog just breaking the course record a few minutes ago, but last year the Chicago Marathon made big news by being the first major marathon to offer equal course record bonuses across all four elite divisions for the men's and women's runners, as well as the men's and women's wheelchair events. So not only is it the win and the prize money, but they're racing for an extra $50,000 right now. That's pretty nice. Marcel just put that in his pocket. Let's check in with the women's elite pack because we've got a bit of a change that has happened here. Looks like Safan Hassan. Safan Hassan is starting to push, hey, and she is looking good, smiling a little bit here and there. But you know what? Let me just give a quick American update. Emily Sisson is our top American about three minutes back from the, our leaders. She is on 218.54 pace, starting to squeeze down closer to her American record of 218.29 that she set last year. Emma Bates, 21 seconds behind Emily Sisson in eighth place, and they are looking good. And a big shout out to Des Linden. She is on pace to break that American Masters record. She's now 40 years old, and that'll be sub 227. Meanwhile, look at this gap. We, just, we saw Safan Hassan go by, and Ruth Chapangedich is, is quite a ways behind her, it looks like. Yeah, just as we went to break, we could see that starting to go. And it's a combination of two things. I think Safan Hassan is feeling really good and she maybe up, the, up the tempo a little bit. And I think Ruth is probably going through a bad patch. And you can see that the distance has expanded there and is expanding with each passing mile. Once this starts to happen, is it, is it hard to, to, to get back up there? Well, sometimes uh, as an athlete, uh, once you start looking over your shoulder, then it means I've given up on first. Now I'm just trying to maintain second place. Okay. Uh, and but as as the mile has this last mile has gone, we can see that that gap has expanded. And I think unless Safan goes through a bad spot spot here, uh, she could be on her way. Now there's still a lot of racing to let's, go. And let's yeah. just talk about this. We have you know praised Safan, which we should. Yes. Safan Hassan is an amazing athlete, but she's running about seven minutes faster than she ran in her one and only marathon. So, so she, it, could, she still has a lot of racing. So. You know, I don't want to say anything negative, no. but I also have to point that out. Seven minutes ahead of where she ran in London. That's a big gap. All right, here's the men. Well, we saw the men came through a, a while ago, 25K. The men were about 15 seconds off of world record pace at 112.04. The American men are sitting at about 206.44, which would be awesome. Uh, and in that pack of American, we have Mats, Rupp, Chilanga, uh, Mesfin, uh, <clears throat> at the very least. But these guys have just been running shoulder to shoulder ever since they lost their pace setter before half. Um, the men's last mile was in 441. They really need to hit about 436 per mile, so they were about five seconds off of world record pace. But you know what? It also comes down to just trying to win this race, and we get down to that. And once they start racing for the win, I think that pace will pick up. Let's check in with the women's wheelchair. We are very close to the finish. Now we've got Catherine Trebrunner ahead. By the way, as soon as this race is over, we're going to send that particular moto back, and we'll take a look at some of the American racers, and we'll get more updates. We're 
getting to the close to the end of though of, of, of crowning maybe a returning champion. We are maybe getting a new champion. I know. No. It's so exciting. This one is definitely going to come down to the line. The women came through a little while ago. They crossed the 40K with a predicted time of 138.22. So that's still about a minute under the existing course record. Which is yours. Giving them, which is, <laughs> I share it. I share it with my teammate Tatiana McFadden. Um, but it looks like they are picking it up now. I saw Susanna pull out to the side. Give a little sprint, testing Catherine's speed a little bit, and they are coming around the curve right, into the climb the now. Once we get to Mount Rosa, Susanna loves to climb, there she goes. and here there she, she goes. goes. She has been waiting for this moment. She doesn't want that downhill. She doesn't want the overspeed. She wants to break away on the climb. But Catherine's got some speed. It took her a second to catch up, but there she is. She's right there on the inside, and she's got the inside line coming around that turn. Are we going to have a sprint finish? We are definitely going to have a sprint finish. Now it looks Susanna like Susanna needs slowing to, down a little she bit. She does. She needs to tuck right back in there, and she's got to be ready. If Susanna's got a chance, she needs to come around the corner and be right on her tail at that turn. Okay, get back on him. Oh, my goodness. That shot. Okay, here we go. They are. They're so close together. You can only see Catherine in her pink shirt oh, right now. Up. Oh, she's pulling ahead of Susanna. This is going to be really, really tight. It will be a sprint. And here Let's see how we look as we make this turn. Here they come. Turn now. Let's see it. Are they going to do it? Are they? Susanna's coming oh, out around. She's got some speed, but I don't know if it's enough. Looks USA like it's going to be Catherine DeBrunner. This is going to be a new champion for the Over women's division. The course record. All right, there you go, brand new champion. This could be a course record, not official just yet. The course record, 139.15, held by Amanda McCrory and Tatiana McFadden. But what a race. Those two were together neck and neck almost the entire time. They were together the whole race. And I know Susanna told me at the press conference she wanted to break away because she was worried about that finish. She knows Catherine has the speed. She saw her do it in Berlin. She didn't want it to end up being a sprint, but Catherine's strong right now. Too strong to break away. Absolutely. All right. Impressive. Let's check back in with the men's elite. We've watched the same two men keep pace and keep keep up with each other. Yeah, they just came through 30K and 126.31. That's 201.41 pace, so about 30 seconds off of world record pace. But again, I haven't given up on that yet because Kelvin Kiptum is a very fast finisher, and we know also that Daniel Mateko has run five times under 59 minutes for the half marathon, so he can close as well. The thing that with Daniel Mateko right now, in the past, he's run as far as 30K as a pace setter. That means he's up front 30K. Now we just passed the 30K mark, so he is in new uncharted territory. Uh, so with every step that he goes, he is in the twilight zone of, oh, can I hang with this? So definitely giving the upper hand to Kiptum right now. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the American land right now at 30K, 130.03. So that's 206.39 pace. We still have Mance, we have Ruff, and we have good old Sammy Chalanga. Uh -huh. He's still hanging tough, so let's root for Sammy Chalanga as well. It would be awesome to get three Americans at least under that 208.10 It sure pace. would. Now let's look at the women's elite. Looks like Safan is still holding on. You said she was seven minutes ahead of where she was. When she was in London, she was, she, has, she ran 2:18 in London. She's on 2:11 pace currently. Wow. So she would, if she finishes at this pace, she will be seven minutes ahead. But you know, one of the things that we talked about when she ran the World Championships just six, six weeks ago, she was thinking about Chicago. Mm -hmm. Her mind, she said, was not 100% in on those championships. Her mind was at, for the Chicago Marathon. So she needed those extra six weeks to keep training mentally. I mean, we haven't even talked about the mind game that you have to play in order to stay in this race and to stay fresh and honest throughout the entire course. So, uh, you know, that was interesting. She did go and race and she would run the rounds and she would go and run her finals and then she would go to the practice track after and do more. That's something. Yeah. It's amazing so she could get ready for this. That's exactly. She is all about learning and that's what's so interesting about her. This is this is a learning experience yep. but it sounds to me like marathon is where she wants to be. Well I mean we've talked with a lot of people. Marathoning has so much money and it really gives you 
a different lifestyle and it was a lot different back in the day. She makes a very good living on the track as well, but a lot of athletes are now changing over. Is it easier on your body? Not necessarily. Right. But you only you race only two, three times a year. Yeah, a you're year, right. All right. Thanks so much, Carrie. We'll be back with more of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Don't go anywhere. Grab a water bottle. I know you okay. I know. Come on, let's go. You can see Safan Hassan has broken away. Apparently, Ruth Chepengedis is 10 seconds back. We can see her now. You can see how far back she is. She's really broken away, Safan. She has broken away. You can see her looking around, which I do I sometimes get a little concerned, but I think she's just as surprised as everyone. You know, usually we see Ruth up here pushing the pace, and Safan is feeling good. All right, let's talk to uh, Kira D'Amato. She's right there in front of Safan. This break happened. It seemed to happen pretty fast, Kira. It did. Safan Hassan is ruthless, pun intended. She has about 60 to 80 meters right now on Ruth Chapman Gedich. However, at the Now I think Kira's breaking up. Kira, don't go anywhere. We're going to come right back to you. We're going to check in on the on the men. Kelvin Kiptum has also broken away. Yes, I think Kelvin has done the knockout blow to Matt Daniel Mateko. We, we said that Mateko was in an uncharted territory, and I think Kiptum took advantage of that, threw in a 421 mile, which has distanced himself from Mateko, and now he is running. We had said all along that he is a great, fast finisher, and he was a little off of world record pace, and I think with that 421, that's put him right back in the ballpark. And this he is sort of what he energy. does. He gets more energy yep. toward the end. At least he yep. talks about that he throws it down between 30 and 35k or 35k to 40k all the time he ran a 2750 for 10k between 30 and 40k at the london marathon and this is his kind of modus operandi right now he is doing exactly right that and and with his 421 he is off to the off to the races literally all right let's check in with alex marigos he has our women's wheelchair winner katherine de brunner alex a wonderful debut today for Catherine DeBrunner. Uh, Catherine, first time racing on American soil, and you set a course record first time here in Chicago. How did that feel? Yeah, it was an amazing race. It's the first time I'm in Chicago, and I must say I really love the city. It's beautiful with the lake, with the skyline, and I had a really great race together with Susanna Oscaroni. She pushed so hard, and uh, yeah, we did it together, like in Berlin also. And then she attacked really hard at the last hill. 
but uh, yeah, I I could fight and I made it, and I, I'm really proud on both of us. I was just gonna say, just like Berlin, a sprint finish. You had four at the end in Berlin, two here. Susanna, the defending champion, pushing you more and more. She made you really earn it here at the end. Yeah, she made me hurt really much. I think we both hurt. And uh, next to us were always the guys. So we had kind of a battle with the guys. It was an amazing uh, race also with the crowd on the street. I really loved it. You set a world record in Berlin. You set the course record here today. You were right there with the guys. How do you see women's wheelchair racing right now? The times are going down. How does that feel? Yeah, that's true. Uh, the, the women's field is so crazy right now. It's amazing. We are so on a high level. And uh, this year, every marathon, another women won. So that shows how big um, or strong the field is and how close we are. And one day, this woman is in the lead. Another day, it's another one. And I really like that challenge. Well, twice the champion in Berlin, once the champion in London, and now Chicago. Hope we can get you to come back here, Catherine. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Back to you guys in the studio. What a debut. Oh, yeah, what a debut indeed. And she, of course she'll be back. She's the champion. Carrie always goes after the champions to get them back. Amanda, what do you think about the course? Sorry, she broke your course. Oh, record. my goodness, I know. It had to happen. It had to happen. But what do you think of that? This was a great race. It was an incredible race. And I love watching it. It's such a fun perspective to be able to see <laughs> here and watch everything unfold. And I have to tell you, there's a little part of me that is like, whew, thank goodness I was not out there. Because they are moving so fast. And Catherine is right. There is a whole new era of distance racers coming up right now that are just absolutely pushing the pace and they are killing it out there. All right. Thanks so much, Amanda. Wonderful to see that athleticism. Now let's check back in with the men's and women's elite field, both Safan Hassan and Kelvin Kiptum all by themselves. Well, we can just see that Kelvin Kiptum is grinding. He followed up that 421 20th mile with a 424 going 21st mile. He's taking his fluids. He's being smart, but this is what he's famous for. He's famous for throwing in that fast 10K between 30 and 40K. And as you can see, as you look behind, Mateko is in the dust, and now he is focused. He knows the time that he is on. They're reading it out that he's on world record pace, or maybe slightly above it at this point in time, and he is rolling. Absolutely. Uh, hopefully we can queue up Diego Estrada. Maybe he, we can get his perspective on what Kelvin's looking like and when the break happened. We also want to check back in with Kira D'Amato. I don't know where he gets it because he looks like he hasn't even, you know, this looks like the beginning of the race. Yeah. He's running just as hard. We, we just passed 35K and 140.20 unofficially. Diego, can you see it? Can you hear us? Can you talk to us? We don't know if we have his mic to see but one, so one, four, 140, 140 20 for 35K or 21.7 miles is seven seconds under world record pace. And he is relentless. That pace, he's, he's running well under 436 per mile pace, which he would have to maintain to set the world record. And you think he can do He feels like, now you talked to him before. Again, let's recap what he told you on Friday. Well, initially he said, give me the course record. I'll get the course record 203.45. And I said, well, okay, so you're not as fit as London. He said, no, I'm more fit than London. I said, well, in London, you only missed it by 16 seconds seconds so why not the world record and he said well yeah maybe I can get the world record so <laughs> I, I think all along he was just trying to depressurize things certainly he's running great right now we still have you know four what? plus miles of racing a lot of Sports can happen but he sure looks good look at those arms he's just driving with he those looks arms as he so goes strong but one of the things that's so different about you know Kiptum is that he went straight to the roads basically he said he grew up and he didn't quite have the funds to get him to El Duret where they go and get on the track so he went straight to the roads and he started running with these amazing people and now you know he trains a little bit on his own he he, he has this kind of he's quiet right so he but he said that's where I learned to be so focused was I was by myself I didn't have all the opportunities hmm. now he's got every opportunity now speaking of the world record it's held by Elliot Kipchoge he is considered the greatest of all time he just won Berlin 
Uh, he didn't do as well at Boston, though, but Berlin, you can see, he was at 202 in Berlin. And I asked him about Eliud Kipchoge, his countryman, and he told me that he's his role model. He respects him, obviously. Everyone does, but he could be taking that record from his role model today. He's the young gun. He's only 23 years of age, so he has at least a decade in front of him if he yeah. plays things right. So this is very exciting today, and I'm sure Eliud Kipchoge is probably smiling as he's watching this as well, saying, okay, maybe this is the heir apparent. Maybe it is the heir apparent. Now we're looking at Safana San, who only her second marathon but she's been so amazing so far and self-deprecating and saying, I'm just here to learn and figure out how to do it. She's kind of figured it out, I think, well, Carrie. Let me just tell everybody about her. She's a 156, 800-meter runner. She's world-class there. 351, 1,500-meter runner. Her mile split, her mile time is 412. Wow. So this lady knows how to run very fast, very, you know, middle-distance type events, but now is transitioning over to this longer stuff so well, and she is really excited. She's been in Utah right by you, Ed, training. Yeah, she's trains up in Deer Valley. She runs on the rail trail, which is a long downhill, and then she has to turn around and run back up the hill so she's got plenty of strength uh, training in, in her legs and uh, just a phenomenal very fun athlete she comes down to our track to do some track work as well she's a great athlete so Hassan just went through in her slowest mile of 528 but that was one of those hills that's I don't know if we can say uphill here in Chicago I know. <laughs> a little slight incline but she's been locking in and you know what she ran a 457 mile 19 crazy fast. amazing all right let's check in we're going to check in the halfway point with matt and courtney but while we do that let's try to queue up kira so we can see about the the women's front she's right on the moto right in front of safan and also diego all right matt and courtney bring the fun i love matt and courtney how's it looking at the halfway point guys <laughs> We're always bringing the fun. We are at the halfway point. We've got Janissa and Dee here. Yeah. They're cheering their friend on. Who are you out here for today? So we're actually out here supporting um, our friend Joshua all the way from Puerto Rico. Hello. Yes! representing so this is actually his first marathon and the first person in our family to run a marathon nice. so we're just extremely happy extremely proud and we're just cheering him on today uh, okay. huge accomplishment see, what do you think it's gonna do for Joshua for his morale and and some of these other runners to see your energy oh out here? so we've been out here early and just it's just lifting up spirits there's people here like when you get quiet they tell you they want that energy, they want the energy. you're at the halfway mark so yes. they need like they need that yeah. so we got our coffee we got our bell <laughs> Yeah. We've just been, you know. All right. Well, you can win something a little bit stronger than coffee because we're going to play a game. We're playing, and we're playing for liquor out yeah. here, okay? <laughs> we're not running. We can drink yeah. as much as we yeah, want. Yeah. You right. go first, Courtney. All right, first question. What was the first year of the Chicago Marathon? Oh, come on, y'all. Here's a hint. It was in the 70s. 1971. No, eh. 1971. No, wrong, all wrong. Okay. Do you have a guess? Uh, 1976. Oh, off, off, Close, okay. 1977. 1977. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, outside the U.S., where do most runners come from? Mexico, England, or Ethiopia? England? No. Ethiopia. Come on. No. Mexico. Oh, Mexico. <laughs> y'all, y'all need help. Okay. How many Chicago neighborhoods does the course go through? Oh. D, you got this, girl. I want to say 10. 10. Uh, Oh my gosh. They're running a long way. 29. 29. Oh, yeah. She got it. <laughs> here we go. We got yeah. Prosecco. We got pee. Prosecco here. here you Pop go. that bottle. Pop going? that bottle, ladies. Popping bottle. That's what's going down at the halfway point, y'all. Yeah. Back to you, Marion. Uh, I see. <laughs> you guys always know how to have a lot of fun. Matt and Courtney at the halfway point with games. With liquor as a prize. Okay, good, healthy thinking there. Let's check in with the women's elite. Kira D'Amato, are you with us? Tell us what you're seeing. I am D'Amato on D'Amato. It is a one-woman <laughs> race at this point. Safan is ruthless. She is about 200 meters in front of Ruth, but I can still see her on the horizon. So um, it does look like she's starting to grin a little bit in her face, and she's really having to dig but she's looking strong and smooth, and this is just incredible to see this woman in her second marathon dominate a race of this caliber. Back to you. She looks pretty good. She does look pretty good, Kara. Now tell us a little bit about what happened at the break. She keeps so, looking over her shoulder, too. 
bridge. Yeah, I think she's uh, she wants to just check and see where Ruth is. But around 30K, Safan Hassan ran by her water stop. She ran back probably three or four tables to grab it uh, and then proceeded on. But that was, um, you know, a little bit of a hiccup there in her race. And since then, it seems like her pace has started to slip ever so slightly. Oh, okay. Well, you know, she did talk about at one point when she was at London that she missed some of her nutrition and some of her water. So she knew that she needed to make sure she picked that up. But she, you said she's grimacing. We saw her look back a little bit, but she seems to be hanging in. All right, looking good. Let's check in if we can with the men's. I think we're also going to try to check on the American. Connor Mance is our first American we're checking in. This is your guy right yeah, here. Yeah, Connor's looking good. He came through 35K on pace for about a 206.47. I think he may have pulled away a little bit for from uh, Chalanga and Rupp at this point. So this is good. He's right at t about the 22 mile mark. If he can hold this for the next four miles, he's gonna be exactly what we were shooting for, hopefully 207 or slightly under 207. I'm really impressed with the patient way that he has run this race thus far. We still have four miles to go, so he's gotta hold things together. And he struggled a little bit at Boston over the last three or four. So until he crosses the finish line, I am not going to rest, but this is a very good sign for him. I think we have uh, four or five other Americans in Sammy Chalanga, Galen Rupp, uh, Clayton Young, uh, and Mesfun, who are all under that 208.10 pace, or were under that about a mile ago. So this is good news for the Americans. Up front with uh, our leader, Kelvin Kiptum, he's uh, past 35K at 140.22 and was at 2 hour 59 uh, pace, and he just ran a 436, which is right at that world record pace that he needs to maintain. So in other words, uh, a little while ago, he was 10 seconds ahead of world record pace, and he just ran uh, another mile that's going to, the 24th mile, uh, that right at pace. So if we can hold it for two more oh, oh. miles, we have History. got a world record on the way. Making Elliot Kipchoge, I'm sure, is watching anxiously. You know He's got to hold it together, though. These last two miles are so difficult. But this is where he says he, he he excels. So we'll see how he does. I mean, this is a man who's only on his third marathon and he's never gone below 202. He's never got, you know, he's been above 202 each time. So he has always gone below 202. Yes, yes. Only run 201. He's yes, only, only done one 201. 201. So he does not know anything else he and he'd love to run under 201, which would be a, a world record. And he told us yesterday he wants to see two hours. And guess what, everybody? He's at two hours and 56 minutes. This could be the man that breaks too. This is the guy, and this is history. Yep. We need to keep our eyes on the screen right now. 20 years <laughs> of age. He's going to be around for a long time, and he's looking so good. He's keeping it together. You can see that Kiptum is, is more than a minute behind him at this point in time. So it, this is the loneliness of the long-distance runner right here. This is what you want late in a race. And if he can keep it together for the last mile and a half, we're going to see a new world record. This is when those crowds probably make a huge difference, huh? Yeah, and, and he's running through a place where where there's not a lot of crowds, but he can, hopefully he can keep this together and keep it rolling. Yeah, they're going to be coming along pretty soon. This is the time that I guess you dig deep. And you said all those times that he was running alone. Yeah. And he had to build up from there. Maybe he's pulling up some of those memories to keep it going. Ten Don't minutes go to go. Ten minutes <laughs> to go. We could see a world record broken here in Chicago. We'll be back with more of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Do not leave your set.
Watching the man who makes history right now. Ed, he just ran faster in the last K than he did in the one before. He ran 430 for his last mile. That puts him ahead of world record pace. Diego, talk to us. What are you what seeing are out there? What are you doing, Diego? So, so out here it's exciting. There's miles that are just unbelievable to watch. And the funny thing is, he's asking me for pace. He keeps looking at me and pointing and telling me to yell splits. And that tells me that he's feeling great if he's even acknowledging me in the moto. And every time he goes for a bottle, not intentionally, but he puts on a surge. So we'll see again right here at 40K how good he's feeling. But that tells me he's full of run. Here he goes. Yep, same thing. He's well aware of what he's doing. So he, I think the world record's going down. Wow. Awesome. Back to you. Diego called it here too. Diego, did, he doesn't look like he, he has any slow at all. He looks like he's... Focused, has energy, he looks stronger really than he did almost when he started. Do you think? Well, Diego? Well, when you see the first 13 miles, I was looking at his knee. I'm here. First 13 miles, yeah, I was what? looking at his knee drive and it was very, very low. And then as soon as he opened it up, his stride just grew by maybe even a foot. Like you could just see how immense his stride got as soon as he picked it up. And that's when, uh, well, that's when he made the move. And then when I saw that 421 mile, he didn't even feel it. Wow. Well, and he dropped, uh, he dropped Mateka like a bad habit at that point in time. 40K, he came through. He's on two hours, 41 second pace. So if he can hold that, keep that rhythm going, we are going to see a new world record. Okay, we want to split screen this if we can. We want to check in with Chinatown, but we do not want to take our eyes off Kelvin Kipton. So let's see if we can check in with Kate Chapel and see what it's looking like in Chinatown. Hey, Kay. Good morning. We are just at about at mile 21 and a half in Chicago's Chinatown, standing under the iconic Chinatown gate. I want to show you some of what's going on here in Chinatown this morning. Take a walk with me this way. Check out these fans. It has picked up tremendously since we got here a couple of hours ago. Take a look at this sign, one of my favorites already this morning. They are anxiously awaiting their runner. Who are you guys waiting for? Uh, Chance Vissi. Who is he to you? Uh, he's my boyfriend. Best friend. Best friend. Best friend, yeah. Where are you guys coming from this morning? Uh, we're here, uh, we live in uh, Argyle. Argyle. Awesome. Good luck, enjoy. All right, walk with me down this way. We have, who? tell me who you are and who you're here to see. We are here to see our daughter, Megan. She's running her 10th marathon today. Wow, and where'd you guys come from this morning? We're in Minneapolis. Wow. She comes from New York. What does she say, how does Chicago's marathon compare to other cities that she's competed in? She actually loves this one. She's a big fan of New York, but she says the energy here, the crowds are so inspiring and so amazing to Absolutely. run in. So, perfect day for it. Thank you and good luck to her. Happy Marathon Day from Chinatown. All the elite runners have already been through and we are anxiously watching more participants come by and the fans and the energy just continues to pick up. For now, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kate Chapel. We are going back to our elite runners. Okay, you've got on the left, Kelvin Kiptum on world record pace right now, looking good. Safan Hassan all by herself. Ruth Chepengedich is way back there. But the, the story of the moment and the story of this marathon is Kelvin Kiptum. We've been talking about him for weeks. People have been looking at him for weeks. He's got two sub-202 marathons, and he looks like 
He might even go below 201, Ed. He's going to be under. I, I, it's going to be close. He was at 154.43 through 40K. That's about four seconds under world record pace. So, uh, you know, he's got to maintain here. And things get difficult over the last little bit, but he's got a good rhythm. He ran 435 for that 25th mile, so he's just got to keep it together. If he can do another one of those, we're going to have a world record. He needs to use the, the crowd here right now, but he is he's coached by a steeplechase champion from Rwanda. He knows how to kick. He's been working on that. He's been on the track. He's been doing tons of 1K repeats and sprints. This is where that's going to shine. Okay, let's take one more look at Safan Hassan before Kelvin Kipton makes that turn and gets toward the finish. Hassan is looking a little more tired than uh, than she did before, but what do you think? What She's you think? slowing a little bit. She's locking in right around 517, 519 pace. Her last mile was 519, so she has this big lead. It's really hard. She's all alone now. This is also new territory. She's running faster than she ever has in this distance. All right, let's get back to Kelvin Kipton because we are closing in on the finish. He's on Michigan Avenue right now. When he makes his next turn, it will be to Mount Roosevelt. Roosevelt is a short distance to Columbus Drive, and that is where we will see the finish line. So what we're learning now is whether or not it is going to be a world record finish. We only have about three minutes left of racing, and those three minutes, I've got to believe that he's pumped with adrenaline. He has worked so hard. He put a big move on. He's a fast finisher. If he can hold things together, you can see he's working right now. It looks so good, and he, he's going to get it done. This okay. is where he tells himself, come on, come on. He's t doing all of the self-talk he needs to. And guess what? 800 meters, we just saw that. He can do this, Ed. 800 okay. meters to go. He still has to go a little bit uphill. Is that a factor in this case? You know how that right up toward the finish, Mount Roosevelt they call it. He's got to go on a little bit of an incline. Did he's got he's got the strength. He can dig down. It's little different muscle fibers, but I think he can attack that. He's going to power the best way that he can. And the, I like his arm carriage. I like his knee lift. He's looking good. The back kick is looking good. He's looking like a track runner here. He's run 58 minutes for the half marathon. He can just finish things up here. Hey, hey Diego, I don't know if you can hear us. If you can chime in, tell us what you're seeing. What what it looks here. like from your vantage point? What does it look like from your vantage point? What do you think? He's about to turn on to Roosevelt. He's well aware of what he's doing, and the crowd is starting to feed him some energy. He knows well, exactly at 800. He stared turn. at me. Diego, he just can you gave hear me us? that look. Yes, I can hear you. He can hear you. You can't hear he's him. Up. I don't think he can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, go. Can you? Oh, yes. So he's looking good. 800 to go. He looked at 800 and he started pressing. Right now he's just about to crest the hill. He's, he knows what he's doing. He is hurting, but he's got his eyes on the clock. He seems focused. His stride is starting to shorten a little bit. His arm drive is starting to swing left and right a little more. But we'll find out soon. Back to you. Okay. He's about to make that turn and make his way toward the finish line. You see him reaching Columbus Drive right now, and there he goes. Come Will on, he break the world record? It's going to be close. Elliot Kipchoge has been Come the GOAT on, for the last 10 years. Th this man is... He's going to do it. It's a two... 14 right now. He's digging down for this. He's worked so hard. Elliot Kipchoge has been the GOAT for the last 10 years, but this is the new young gun, Kelvin Kiptum, finishing. We're going to get ourselves a new world record. He recognizes it. He's waving to the crowd. Kisses. An amazing effort by Kelvin Kiptum for a new world record at the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. And Kerry Pinkowski could not be happier as he hugs him at the finish line. Wow, a brand new men's world record unofficial two hours and we don't even know it's at 247 right now he hasn't even hit 201 yet he's been behind the finish line for a while amazing we'll get that official time two hours and 30 whatever wow this is the future for a man who said his family could not afford to get him to the track for a man that went out on the roads in kenya and put the work in for a man that trained by himself and coached himself for a long time this is what it's all about listening to sean paul okay let's go whatever it takes and clearly two uh, hours and 30 it's official. It's a world record. He was the second fastest. Now he is, he is the, the fastest. fastest. He's 23 years of age. We have a future is bright for marathoning for Kenya and for the world. We have to say unofficial, but man, he blew it out of the water. He blew it out of the water.
and look at him. I mean, look at him. I know he's got energy. He's got to got celebrate and be like to Yes. Unbelievable. He took almost a full, what was it? His, his last time was 201.25. Yep. I mean, he almost took a full, and he's hugging Helen Canucci right there. Yes. He is. From what a how, moment. From how and fast. not one world record holder to another. The next generation. You are looking at history right here at the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. This is amazing. We're going to enjoy this moment right now, but we're also going to enjoy this for the next decade plus. Kelvin Kiptum, an amazing race, great finish. He loves to negative split that, that second half, run faster that second half than the first half. He did it again today. He's three for three, uh, three marathons, three wins, and now a world record. And 36 seconds away from breaking two yes. hours. Okay. People, yes. that is, he wants to break he two hours. He is going to break two hours. He's 23 years old. He's 36 seconds away from doing that. Wow. Unbelievable. And he shaved so much time off of his last win. And he did so much of this without pace setters as well. You put him in a situation where he has somebody there all the way through 30K. This time, this time is toast. It was amazing. 435 per mile roughly time and time again. And this man said he just simply loves to run. You can see it in his smile. He loves to work hard. He loves to grind it out. But really, it's in his heart and his, in his soul. Amazing. Calvert. We just saw a world record, people. We just saw an amazing world We got chills world here. We saw an obliteration of the world record. He absolutely. I, I, I can't, I've run out of superlatives. It's amazing. Well, Kerry Pinkowski better be pleased. He knew to bring in this man. And this man is one that Ilya Kipchoge has been watching. And to be honest, cheering on. He is a man. Ilya Kipchoge is a man that we all yes. can yeah. learn from. Yeah. And yes. has done so much for our sport. But this man right here at 23 years old to say, I can do it. The pressure that he's had. And he was trying to dial that pressure trying. back. I just want course record. Course record was so not in his sights. <laughs> and now he's going to run with Look at that. He's running with the pacer. Is that who is that? I don't even know. It looks like a pacer. That looks like a pacer is finished. Wow. Benson Kipruto. Kipruto, last year's champion. champion. Kipruto, last year's champion. And he ran 203.05 unofficially, so he's got a new PR. Yeah. I mean, that's what it's all about. This camaraderie. He's still got energy to run with his countrymen. Benson Caputo's been a great champion. And to finish second place in a historic day like this, props to Benson Caputo. He was back there. He knew he wasn't going to hang with that world record pace, but he himself ran a personal best by almost a minute and a half. Amazing. Amazing to see. Kenya won two. Wow. And here comes number three. I think the third place finisher's coming in. I don't know who this is in the red we can see him in a different camera angle coming in. John, maybe John Kelvin Tiger, will come maybe. and run with her as well. Last year, yep. third here again. He has to be very pleased with his his race. Amazing. I can't get over the difference. I mean, the, 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 he shaved so much time off of the world record and off of his win. Well, and you know, we in haven't London. talked about many marathons at 201 pace. No, no, it's, it's, it's only been... Really There's only three and, men that have done it. Exactly. Elliot Hinn and uh, Halek. So, yep. And this is our first this official one first under 201. Yeah, so this is so oh, great. I know. So historic <laughs> in so many ways. Great job, crew. Wow. And just to, just to be able to chat with him yesterday and to talk to this young man about the pressure that he has and the amazing ability he has the world is watching him oh it is today we congratulate him. and we we'll continue and, and to we need watch a, him. and we need to hear him because he is so articulate and yes, he, he speaks is. english so well and he loves chicago he said it he <laughs> loves chicago harry knows what he's doing he'll get him back next year as the returning he did say he likes yeah, chelsea the the, the, the football, the football right. team but i think he's going to start liking some chicago I professional think teams as well, well showing in the chicago uh, fire we got it we got to play some sean paul music too because he's a big <laughs> reggae rap guy yes i think sean Paul's going to have to do a personal concert. You got that right. Wow. Can't get over it. All right, let's check in with Connor Mance. He's making his okay. way in. Let's okay. see. This is your He's guy. He's got a good race going. He's right at 207 pace. If he can just get up this hill and make that left turn, things are going to be great. Look at his form now at this stage of the race. How's he looking to you? He's right? keeping it together. I mean, I, to, to me right now, it looks like he's hurting a little bit, so he's got to keep it together. I just looked at his clock and yep. his watch. He's 206.30, but he's going to be right at 207 if he can <laughs> make that turn, buddy. You'll make it. He's going to be under the Olympic standard. 
Yes, uh, and once he makes this final left turn, he can bring it home. He's looking over his shoulder, uh, but he's going to be in the 207 range as he makes this turn and goes for home. He's the first American to finish here today. That's saying something, too. Congrats, Ed, on having a strong runner in the Let field. Let me get him across the finish line first. Okay. Uh, but, okay. And that may oh, be Jed. Clayton Young, his training partner, right behind him. And if that's the case, then... That's uh, one of your athletes as yeah, well? Yeah, it's going to be a great day uh, in Provo, Utah. 200 meters to go. Uh, Come on, Connor, you got it. I'm not seeing a clock right now, so we'll let you know as soon as we know what that mark is. My, my stopwatch finished with the world record. With the world record, okay. Understandable, but he's looking good. Okay, all the way through. Americans should be happy right now because we wanted a 208, sub 208, 10 pace. Connor Mance is going to deliver on that. It's going to be a personal best for him. We'll give you his time as soon as we get it. I think that's Clayton Young right behind him. Fastest American marathon debut ever at 208.16. 208.16. Is that going to be low enough? Is that what they said it was? I thought she, I just heard 208.16. That's what he had run before. We'll see. Up, oh, hold him up. All right. Alex has Kelvin Kiptum at the finish line. Wow, we have to say, Alex, we are all blown away. And you're right there, so I know you're blown away. It was an unforgettable moment, Mary and Kelvin. The world was watching today, and you delivered a world record. How did it feel to cross the finish line in record time? I feel so happy. Uh, I was well prepared. I knew I was coming for a, a, a course record. But unfortunately, a world record. Yeah. I'm very so much happy. <laughs> you jumped into Carrie's arms. Was what, what was that moment? Do you feel you had to do it? You had to jump in. What were you feeling when you knew it was yours? I was feeling so happy. I was still feeling so happy. Yeah. When you saw the time, you came down to the end. How did you push and what was in your head when you saw the time and you knew you had a chance? Yes, I saw the time in front of me. I said, let me try. Maybe I can run under 200, unfortunately. Yeah. You said in Valencia you were trying to run 207, 208. You ran 205. You said in London you were trying to run 205. You ran a 201. What is next for you as you are now already the world record holder? How do you top this? For now, I'm very happy. Uh, a world record was not in my mind today but it has come definitely but i knew one day one time i'll be a world record holder and this was your first time in chicago what did you think of the course what did you think of the race this is my first time in chicago i've had a, a, so long time ago that chicago is a flat course so i said let me go and try chicago yeah well i hope you remember chicago because chicago will always remember you for this Congratulations on this wonderful world record. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, thank you. Back to you guys in the studio. Kelvin Kiptum, our new world record holder, two hours and 35 seconds. Amazing, Alex. We're all blown away here in the studio as well. Here's Emily Sisson. She's our American leader. Yep. And we want to hopefully get a split screen so we can see Safan Hassan as well. We don't want to miss her making her way to the finish, but Emily's doing well. Emily's at 2.20.05 pace. She um, just went through mile 20, 25. So she's a minute and 20 seconds ahead of Emma Bates. But this is sort of where, you know, Emily Sisson shines, even though she's slowing. She gets into her mind and she plays with Legos before because her husband is a psychiatrist. He knows how to get her mind in the right frame of mind when she's in pain. She's in pain here, she's slowing, we know that. But this is where she turns on that mind. She starts working on her arms, her knee drift, knee lift. She is someone that's very fast on the track as well, much like Safan Hassan, who we're watching in on the top left-hand corner there. Safan is finishing but slowing as well. Mm -hmm. Safan is about she just went through her last mile in 5.19. She's on 2.13.33 pace. Wow. So it's still the number two fastest time right. ever run. Right. <laughs> so again, and ahead, history. And ahead of the world record that Tigas Asefa just broke. So nope, not ahead. She's behind of that. No, no, no. I mean, she's ahead of the record that was broken 2.14.04. Yep, 2.14. So she would so be, yeah, be ahead yeah, of the course be. record here, which was a world record at right. the time. At the time. Yep. 
Now we're looking at Safan right now. She does, she looks a little tight. Can we get Kira? I'm not sure if we can get Kira D'Amato right now. I'd love to see what her perspective is and what she's seeing from Safan from her vantage point. She looks a little tired, more tired this than she did, obviously. I mean, you're getting close. Oh, Kira, go ahead. Yep. Yeah, we just passed the 800 to go, and I think with every step, she's just getting it into sport mode and coming along the way. She is digging deep. I am getting emotional just seeing just how hard she is pushing this and to run the second fastest time ever and a course record. I mean, she is working it, and it's just, it's been incredible to see. It has. We're going it up the like final much. last hill right now. And she'll turn you've and make her this, way into Kira. the finish line. You, this hill, what is this doing to you when you've got this hill right toward the finish? I mean, at this point, 400 to go, I'm sure she's getting into her track speed and she's just thinking, okay, 400 to go. I've heard this bell lap more times than I can remember. She, her body knows what to do at this point. We're topping uh, the final hill and then she'll have a little downhill and see the finish line. And I'm sure we'll see her wheels really uh, speed through the finish line. Yeah, we do know she is a track star. So this is maybe, I don't know where you get the energy to turn on when you've already done uh, almost 26 miles. I don't know where that comes from, but if you can do it, it's because you've got some experience at track. I know where it's come from. I mean, she was an amazing athlete when she was younger on the track. She's run so fast. Look at, Look at her. We Look talked at her. about her she's going to her arms on the track. She's going to her arms here. Rip she's mode. getting it out. This is a woman that at the age of 13, she became a refugee in the Netherlands. She has given everything to Look this sport. She loves to run fast. She is running the second fastest time in the history of the sport. She is doing so many great things for the young women and girls that are looking up to her. And here we go at the Bank of America Chicago Marathon, our champion, Safan Hassan. Unofficially a course record right now. Unbelievable. Her second marathon. Keep that in mind. Her second marathon is now the second fastest marathon of all time. 213.43, I think is the unofficial. Wow. 213.43. That's a good 30 seconds under Bridget Koskai's course old course record set and the in the Bank of America's Chicago Marathon in 2019, which was a world record. So we have three course records set at the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon and three, two, one world record and two course records, three course records. Well, the sport is changing, the technology is changing, but the- Four course records, four course records. Four course records and one world record. You're right, sorry, Amanda. That's right, yes. the women have a day. course record It's your perfect too. day. Four course records and one world record. I think Kerry Pinkowski's happy. I think he's happy. <laughs> I think Kerry but yes, better be feeling happy. good. These athletes that they brought in are amazing. And look at this, just giving thanks and, and praise. And of course, that personality comes out. <laughs> there it is. We can see that with her. Just six weeks ago, she was running the world championships in Budapest, six Hungary. Weeks. Six, six weeks. weeks ago. And now she's able to translate, turn that over, and the second fastest marathon ever run by a woman. Congratulations. I have chills. This has been such an amazing performance of athletics to watch. And I think so many of us have grown up with Safan Hassan. We've watched her at a young age be so, so good on the track. And then we've watched her now transition into this great distance runner. But she's curious, she says. She likes to challenge herself. We saw Ruth Chepengedic just go by here. But this woman is showing us to push ourselves to different limits and to try things that we don't know we can do. And it's really interesting. The one big question mark, what in the world is this woman gonna run at the Olympics? She's already won two Olympic golds. She's got an Olympic bronze. She can do any event she really wants. She really can. She really do can. You she could run the 800. Do you think she yeah. would do the marathon well, and do you want to run for less I mean, than two minutes or do you, you want, want to run for a little more than two hours? I mean, you know. What's your choice? Yes. I wouldn't imagine she could do both, so. Well, the marathon is often the last event, so technically she could do, uh, do that as well. But she'll have plenty of time to think about that. Uh, back, uh, we should mention, we saw Connor Mance finish his time, 207.47 
for sixth place. And right behind him, Clayton Young. What a huge breakthrough race for him. 208 flat for the marathon. So sixth and seventh training partners together. We knew coming in. Your kids. They're my guys. Your young guys. Yeah, I'm very fortunate to be able to work with them. So happy, so proud of them. And both on this breaking day the Olympic well. standard. But got the Olympic A standard, so that's there you fantastic. Go. So all of American men distance running can be happy as well because that opened the gate for at least two spots to the Olympics. Can I give a quick American uh, yes, you female uh, update? So Emily Sisson is still in the lead. She's slowing just a little bit. She's on 221 pace. But closing in, Molly Seidel, who we have been missing wow. in the sport a little bit. She's been here, but she hasn't been quite back. We're looking at Emily Sisson, who's trying really hard to catch all the people coming back to her and refocus. But let's give a big shout out right now and keep your eyes on the clock and also on the screen to see Molly Seidel. She is now running 222 pace, which she set out to do. She did not run Worlds. She ran the Olympic Games in 2021. She won a bronze medal there, and she is back, everybody. Sarah Vaughn is now moving into that fourth spot for America. Oh, excuse me, number three spot for Americans. Sarah Vaughn, mother of four, has Whoa. been here before in Chicago. She works full time as a realtor. She's got kind of that all American story where she's working a lot. She's got these kids, but she's still trying to do what she loves. It's amazing. And she's getting out here and crushing it every single time. What are you doing on the weekend? I'm running a marathon. Exactly. And crushing it. Yep. And then I go and sell houses all day and run to every single and then, event. And then with and my watch kids. her daughter crush it as well. Her daughter's a great runner as well. Wow. Making me feel like a slouch over here. Okay. Sarah Bond, can I just give a quick uh, pace? 223.28 projected finishing time. That would get her under that Olympic standard as well. So Molly Seidel on the Olympic standard pace right now, 222. Sarah Vaughn right behind her, and Emily Sisson trying to crack the tape for the first American. Okay, what do we know? We haven't heard Bates. anything from Bates. Bates. Yeah, we is. haven't heard anything from Emma Bates after 35K, and so that's that, an doesn't, interesting that doesn't point, bode well. Yeah. Because we only have, what is it, three months until the Olympic trials? Yeah. Something like that. And if today isn't going well, then do they have that plan B? Like, do they end up dropping out? Yeah. Do they slow it down? There's a lot of things that go into this. This is their job. And you only get to make an Olympic team one day every four years. Right. So it's very important. We talked a lot about Emma Bates. She's firing on all cylinders right now. And if today isn't quite her day, maybe then she has to. Oh, Bates is only one in the field with the standard. So she too has so that standard. So she doesn't have to so do it right now. she doesn't have to finish. So it yeah. might be smart if she's not feeling great to yeah. step aside. Yeah, and, and what do we push. have? Do we have 16 weeks uh, recovery, something like that between this and? Yeah, it's February 3rd. Yeah, February 3rd. So, so in so Orlando. Couple, you know, three, three plus months. So, yes. so you need to start talking about it. And even with, uh, with Connor Mance and Clayton Young, there was some discussion about can we recover adequately from this race uh, to the Olympic trials, and time will tell. But I'm really excited for, for them and, and for all the American women that are running so well as well. I know that Ruth Chepengedich was second in 2.15.37, I believe. But, you know, just looking at Emily Sisson on your screen or not, anyone who knows her knows this isn't quite her zip. She doesn't have that real power that she has coming off the pavement, which is what really is kind of her thing. She's got that track speed, but also has really transitioned well to the marathon. You can see her dip her chin a little bit. Mm -hmm. She's looking down rather than up and really attacking, but she's doing the hard thing right now. She's fighting through, and this is making her an even more fierce of a co competitor. She's gone through some ups and downs, but she hasn't really had a bad marathon yeah. yet. Yeah. She's about to hit that turn where she'll hit Mount Roosevelt, so she knows the end is coming. Yeah. Here she is about to make that turn. It I, I, I'm always blown away by getting the energy to get up that hill. And then we saw it with Safana's son. She poured it on at the end. Yes, so they dig deep, clearly. Dig deep. You runners know how to dig deep and, and pull it out. What I like about her is her poise. When this isn't exactly where she wants to be finishing, like, you know, we know that she wants to kick it in really fast. She's not kicking it in. She's finishing this race. But the poise that she has. That's why she's still running 220-something. Yeah, and she's still going to have a, a very good time, 221-plus, right. uh, at the end of the day. And, and, you know, as an American record holder that she set last year, 218-29, not every day are you going to PR. And so this is still well within her, her wheelhouse. She's going to finish this thing up, and solid effort by her. All right, let's get back to that finish. We want to see Emily Sisson make her way across the finish line. I th I'm trying to see... 
Is this Molly Seidel Molly. right here? Nope, that's Emily. Sorry, this we're just Emily? getting a different look at Emily. Oh, it is? Yep. Oh, it is. It's her coming over the hill. Resting that. Yet. It's yep. her coming over the She's making this hill. final turn, getting a little bit of a downhill push there to, you know, slingshot off this turn now. As All she right, here we go. Gets to that finish line. Having a solid day, a great day for her, but, you know, not quite an American record day. No. She still got that. It's hers to hold. Yep, exactly. Yeah. It's hers to hold. But here she comes. She's coming in. She'll be the first American finisher again. And even though she probably, if she were in the top three at the Olympic trials, because she's run so fast, she would have gotten in by rankings. But this is really nice for her now to have that time yeah. and to be able to go to the trials and just race. Emily Throw the cross out the door. Don't have to worry race. about it. Who has yeah. also excelled at uh, championships indoor and outdoor. Emily Sisson, NCAA champion. She was runner up here and last year. She's a, an Olympian and she's an American record holder and still here finishing again. First American for the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. 222. 222.02 unofficially is what Another we heard. So, very nice day. On okay. Part. Wonderful to see. What a great day we've had. I am still like running on adrenaline here just watching these, these athletes make their way across the finish line. Amazing, the amazing work. And you said he's a psychiatrist. Yeah, that's fast. They, they train together. They know how to get each other. They do it all. He knows together. how to get her out of her head. Yeah, that's critical, right? With I mean, so much of this is is a mind game. I think exactly what you said. He has her do these things to get out of her head. He wants her to focus on something else. So when it comes to game time, race day, they want her to be able to focus. And look at the focus that this woman right. has. Molly Seidel. Molly Seidel has had the ups and downs, and she's been very open with some struggles that she's had, both with mental health, her body, and she keeps grinding it out. Look at how excited she is. We are all excited to see her back. Absolutely. Yeah. And in her very first marathon, she went and won the Olympic trials. And then she goes to the Olympic Games and wins a bronze medal. This is one tough cookie. All right, way to go. Nicely done. There's Sarah Vaughn that you talked about, the one that is the realtor full time, mother of four. Not, not Sarah Vaughn there, no. Sarah oh, I thought you said this was Sarah Vaughn. Coming, no, not. She must have that been past her. there. Oh, I thought that was her. Getting all sorts of hugs. There's there. Sarah Vaughn in the purple. Yep, there she is. Ben Bruce there, new father, Steph Bruce, who we know so well. 119, Rose Harvey. Yes, from Great Britain. Excuse me, Rose. I needed to look quick down, but there's Rose Harvey and then Sarah Vaughn. Okay. Molly Seidel on the right of your screen, Sarah Vaughn on the left. And look at, she's, Sarah Vaughn is looking like she's a little bit surprised. You know, you can see that on her face. I don't know if any of us are surprised by the grit that that woman has, right? Let's check in with Alex Maragos. He has Safan Hassan right now. An amazing performance course record. Alex. Course record and personal record for Safan Hassan today. How do you feel crossing today, Safan? I was a winner finish. I was so grateful. I'm so happy. But like the last five kilometers, I was telling myself, never run again marathon. It was so pain. I, I know you're, you've only run a couple of marathons, but you seem to like them because you keep winning them. And you're you're a 12-time record holder in in the Netherlands, and you love marathons. So, what do you think about this distance? I I just love it. I just love it. the the pain and the time was like you hear yourself, but when you finish, you wanna do again. It is so amazing. Like just. I don't know. I loved it, and it's my second marathon, and I win. And that's unbelievable. I can't describe how I feel. You were running, running with Ruth for a while. Tell me about the breakaway. How did the push happen? How did, how were you able to gain on that lead? You know, even around 500 meters, it was so hard for me for me to start, and the first five kilometers I really suffered, and I catch up with them, and so I'm unexperienced, and wherever I get water I, uh, back. Uh, I get off from them and I have to catch up and I think we start too hard. Uh, they, I think the far is like 10 kilometers we start 13 and we both broke. And you said your training for this was different from London. How? how? It might, well, it's better clearly because you had an even better time. Yeah, it, it is actually really, I, uh, I, I'm very, very, very happy about my training and I really train for it. I don't know six weeks is enough, but I have training so hard. I think that's why I'm getting little bit too cold today and I still around amazing time and I never 
thought I would run. I was like, thought, okay, I'm like a shape of 215, you know. I just hung up up a hair. But it is amazing. It is amazing, unbelievable. 213.38, a great time. Your first time racing on American soil. We hope it's not the last time here in Chicago. No, I hope I will like, keep continuing, keep yes. coming back. And it is, it is very good. I'm grateful. I can't wait to come back. Thank you, Safan. Congratulations. Safan Hassan, our women's champion today, guys. Oh, we want her back as well. She's going to be our returning champ. She's so fun to watch. Thanks so much, Alex. And here, one more time, take another look. We'll be showing it to you all day long. Calvin Kiptum with the world record. We'll be back with more of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. I want to also tell you Kira's here. Damato, if you want if you want me to get Kira, if you want like more from Okay. Okay, not yet. <laughs> yeah. Would you like a hand warmer? Oh, thank you. Okay, one shot. You're oh, good. No. Program fee level. Oh, I'm not in this one. You're not. I thought you were, but you're not. Yeah, am, am I not in this one then? I don't hear Brian. Okay, so I'm not in. Am I tossing to anybody? Just Marion? Okay, okay. You got it. We're back on this world record edition, the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Our drone footage, which you are seeing right now, is sponsored by Abbott. Life to the fullest. You can certainly echo that in what we saw out of the amazing finish from Calvin Kiptum. Layla Rahimi joining you from the finish line where we got to see for the first time since 2013, fans at that finish line. They were on hand to see this amazing moment and you could tell it really energized Kipton when he was able to pass and break the world record previously held by Eliud Kipchoge, considered the greatest of all time. One of those people, by the way, at that finish line on hand to see it for himself. The previous man who set the world record here, Khalid Kanuchi, that was back in 1999. He has a special history with this marathon, Marion, as you know. So it was nice to see that symmetry. And then Kerry Pinkowski, the race director, runs by and said to me, I told you he was special. That's saying the very most and the very least at the same time. No doubt about it, Layla. What an amazing day. How exciting it must have been to be right down there at the finish line. We're all really jealous right now because we would love to have been there, but I feel like the energy even in this room was on fire and it had to be like that in this entire city because what a day. Yeah. I mean, this is really, really huge. We watched an amazing feat happen right before our eyes. But also, we're gonna eventually get back to Alex. We almost had Alex Maragos and two really cool young men. Uh -huh. 
Ed Eyestone's trainees, the kids that he coaches. They're not kids, they're young men, and they just did really, really well. We'll get back to them shortly. Oh, now we have Alex. All right. Let's head down to the finish line. Alex Maragos is with Connor Mance and Clayton Young. Alex. Yeah, just shuffling in after their finish side by side. Both personal records for both of these guys. Congratulations on great races. Start with you, Connor. How did it feel out there on the track tonight? Uh, it was great. I had some great help from the Pacers. Um, and it was just a it's great weather, great time to run. Uh, my coach prepared me well. Shout out to Coach <laughs> Eyestone, who's in the studio today. Um, but it was a good run, and I, I felt really strong through about uh, 38K, and then things kind of fell apart, but I'm, I'm happy to run away with the PB. Yeah, and, and Clayton, you, you called it a big time PR for you today, so your, your smiles as well. I mean, blistering fast ahead of the course, but you're happy with how you perform? Absolutely, very happy. You know, followed Coach Eyestone's plan of patience, followed by destruction and really tried to destroy that last half and reel in uh, that, that front pack as much as I could and finish with a big time PB for me. Ed, I don't know if you want to jump in at all and give a message to these guys. They're all smiles here at the finish, giving you big credit. <laughs> Maybe you can tell them I'm super proud of them, their efforts today. It's, it's awesome when you have that symbiotic relationship and you can train together. Uh, uh, Connor's time, I think, is the fourth fastest time ever by an American, so that's pretty exciting, guys. Congratulations on that. And uh, to, to Connor and then Clayton, to hold on like you did and finish as strong as you did. I think the future is bright for both of you guys, and you both unlocked a couple of spots for the uh, U.S. Olympic team. We've got two, at least two spots going to Paris. At least two spots going right, to Paris Alex, with those times. It. He said he's really proud. I know how excited Ed is for you guys, and he's just so proud of you guys and just thrilled with your times today. Amazing times up front near the front, guys. Just you should be really proud. And thanks again for for uh, for joining us today. Hope you come back again next year to Chicago. Absolutely. All right. We'll see. All right. Hope to see you guys in Paris as well. Pa Paris first. Thanks, Paris coach. first. Yes. Paris back first. to you guys. <laughs> Paris, Paris first. first. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> coach is like, don't get ahead of yourselves. But you talk about it. You like it here in Chicago for your athletes. It is. You know, it's where my own personal record came uh, many years ago. And it's usually where I want my guys to come to because it's not a technical a marathon like Boston that has the hills you have to. A marathon's hard enough when you're running 26.2 miles. So let's make it flat. Let's make it fast. Let's catch good weather. Uh, and that happened for them today. I'm super excited for them. I'll, obviously, a 30-second PR for Mance and a huge PR for uh, Clayton. And again, that just allows at least two Americans to, to be going on. Now, our main mission now is recovery from this because now we still have to get ready and run well at the Olympic trials on February 3rd in Orlando, Florida. Doesn't hurt your recruiting either, does it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say anything. That's a big part of being a coach. Which is recruiting. Yeah. All right, you guys, let's get a wrap up just of how you're feeling about how today went. Amanda, two course records. I was so excited life. about my course records for the wheelchair division. Now we had a world record. I know, <laughs> I know. But amazing races. Marcel Hoog smashing his world her his course record that he set last year four wins here in Chicago but we also had two Americans up in the top four. Daniel Romanchuk coming in second with a sprint finish against Yetzi Platt, and then Aaron Pike with that second American All slot. Right. So they're in good shape for the New York City Marathon for our selection event for the Paris Paralympic Marathon. All right. And then on the women's side, what an incredible, exciting finish between Catherine DeBruner and Susanna Scaroni. That sprint was awesome. Catherine, new winner here, her first American marathon, but coming in as the world record holder, the brand new world record holder. And then Tatiana McFadden taking that third podium spot, which is great to see her back up there after a rough start to her season this year. She's back and she's strong and she's going to be ready to go for Paris. All right. Can't wait to see how everyone does in New York City. Your Paralympic trial. Really exciting. Carrie, what can we say? It's been an, a heck of a race, both men and women. Uh, what do you think? Well, I think on the women's side, let's just start there. Safan Hassan, one of the best on the track, but now is transitioning to the roads, and she ran the second fastest time ever run, over 26.2. That's 213.44 that she ran today. She's a joy to watch, and congratulations to her. But on the, on the American side, really fun day today. Emily Sisson didn't quite get that sub-220 that she was looking for again, but she competed hard, and that was her goal. She ran 2.22.09. Molly Seidel, she's back. She's healthy. She looks great. She was our second American. Big, big praise to Sarah Vaughn. She works super hard in her realtor job, but also as a mother of four. And, and she Emma Bates. And Emma Bates. She we didn't finish. have her final um, split, but then we saw that she finished in 225, just about three minutes slower than her PR. 
she had a great day today too. All right, and then last but not yeah. least, Ed Eyestone. We, we're, well, we're breaking records, course records, yeah. world records. Well, <laughs> again, and it all begins and ends with a fast course and great conditions. We had that today. And then we had a, a champion in Kelvin Kiptum. We knew after London with his fast finish running under 60 minutes for the second half that he had a chance. And he came and he took advantage of that chance, ran a masterful race. He's only 23 years of age, so we're going to see a lot of this guy. And that, that world record is going to continue to go down excited for the ne next generation now of marathon runners and then Safan Hassan obviously six weeks after the world championships she gets uh, 2 13 44 the second fastest time ever by a woman runner and Kelvin Kiptum had been the second fastest guy after London so I think mm -hmm. Safan Hassan has great things ahead as well can Absolutely. we give one more shout out to Des Linden who was second here 13 years ago I believe she set a new American Masters record here, so she now is the fastest 40-plus woman. All right, way to go. <laughs> One more thing, just what your thoughts about Kerry Pinkowski and what he's done with the Bank of America Chicago Marathon in its 45th running. Can I just say that he brings the best, but he also has this great energy and personality that people come here and they have fun here. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the big thing. We know it's flat and fast. We know Chicago's amazing, but the, the energy that Kerry Pankowski yeah. and the staff has is it's like no other. So it's, it's really neat. Yeah, and you know he talks with his checkbook to get to get the <laughs> fields true. here that he has because yeah. you have to pay out some good money to get these elite athletes, and they are super elite athletes. Yeah. He had seven men who'd run 205 or faster. That's not cheap, and all the pace setters and everything. So thank you, Gary Pinkowski, for opening up that checkbook. You may not be paying us that much money, <laughs> but but you're, you're, you're paying our athletes a, a lot. So and congratulations, thank you. And speaking of Gary Pinkowski, he is now about to. Give the awards to the winners. He's with Alex Maragos right now. Alex. Thanks, thanks, Marion. Carrie, I have never seen a moment like you just had with Kelvin Kiptum at the finish. What, what, well, uh, explain that. You know, it's, it's just, uh, it's been a long time since we've had the men's record, and I, I was up with Khalid Kanuchi earlier this morning, and, you know, there's such a rich legacy in history. If you go back to Steve Jones, who's with us this weekend in the 80s, and then Khalid Kanuchi, Sammy Wanjiro, some of the great athletes that have competed here over the years, uh, it just brings it all home. And, and uh, you know, I told everybody the first time I saw Kelvin, I, he was special, and he I put him at the same level of a Kanuchi, may, maybe maybe the best I've ever seen, and, and the great late Sammy Wanjiru, who was who was amazing. We had to get this guy here, get him on the streets of Chicago, and let him do his thing. He was absolutely magnificent. Uh, one of the great runs I've, I have ever seen. I mean, it, and, and the fastest time in the history of the world. So. Uh, very special day in Chicago. He did not disappoint you. People crying here at the finish line with all the emotion we saw today. All right, let's hand out some medals. First, we're going to start with Safan. I'll give the mic to you. Yeah, uh, our, our women's champion, first time in Chicago, a time of 2.13.44, broke our course record, former world record course of Bridget Koskai, Safan Hassan. Oh, here we go. Thanks, Janet. Our 2023 women's champion, Safan Hassan, and then the next guy who's already famous in Chicago, uh, the world record holder, our 2023 Bank of America Chicago Marathon champion and a new world record, Kelvin Kiptum. Let's hear it for these guys, man. A great day down here at the finish. Marion? I tell you what, I, I, I can't get over it. Kelvin Kiptum and Safana Hassan, the future of racing here, yeah. right here, we're seeing it. Because I don't think we've seen the last of Safana Hassan, and we know we haven't seen the last of Kelvin Kiptum. What a great preview for the Olympic Games coming up in Paris next August. I mean, it's going to be fun to see how these two fare and to see what Safan ends up running. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll be back. Don't go anywhere. You have had quite a show to watch, but we'll be back with more of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. But before we do that, Amanda, quick two seconds on what you thought about the race. Amazing. What an incredible field. What incredible fields across every division. Great performances. And 
Kerry Pinkowski and his team have always been super, super supportive of our wheelchair division. Athletes coming out of the University of Illinois, uplifting those athletes, treating them like the elite athletes they are, and this is no exception. Thanks so much. Amanda McCrory, Carrie Tollison, Ed Eyestone. I'll have no voice at the end of this, but it'll be worth it. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Don't go anywhere, though. We're not done bringing you more of the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Other American finished with the standard. Okay. Drone shot. Sponsored read. Yes, yes. Can you hear me through Unity? Okay. Uh, all right, cool. So, yeah, I don't have program for some reason in Unity anymore. I went out sometime during the race. Uh, okay. E I F B four. I do, Oscar. We're doing Chris right now. Okay, we're getting cues. We're getting cues. All right. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And then, uh, like I said, Diego and Kira are here if you need. Michael Kaufman and Christian Naus, Abdul Aziz and Siad of Norway, and Peter Jensen and Mai Ujisawa. We're back on the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon as our drone footage that you have seen all show. It is absolutely beautiful. It is sponsored by Abbott. Life to the fullest. We go back out on the course and to our Jen DeSalvo. Jen, what do you have for us here as we are wrapping up at the finish line and watching many, many runners. Well, we're here at right mile now. 26 with Chris Miller from Avid. Chris, oh my gosh, what a day. Just so many amazing performances. How do you feel about being out here? Oh, it's fantastic. After being in Berlin last weekend to see the women's world record and then this weekend to see the men's world record, take, it's just amazing. But at Avid, this is our hometown. And as a company that's about health technologies, it's amazing to celebrate those winners, but it's even more so to celebrate all those other runners coming in. So about a mile south of us, we have our avid cheer zone at mile 24 and a half. There's 300 employees and family members who are out there cheering and supporting all those runners today. Yeah, but besides the people cheering, you have a ton of Abbott runners out there. Yeah, we've got 88 runners out there today, Abbott employees and friends of Abbott who are out running. There's also 200 people who will be getting their Abbott World Marathon Majors six-star medal today. So they've run all six after when they finish, they've run Tokyo, Boston, Berlin, London, New York, and now Chicago to achieve that epic success. Man, what an accomplishment. What a perfect day too. A lot of fast people out in the course. Uh, I have a ton of friends out there. What about you? Uh, yeah, I've got a good friend actually coming in any minute now. He's the same guy from last year that I was watching for. So Scott should be coming in here pretty soon. But again, it's not just these fast people running the two to three hours. It's those four or five hour runners that are great to celebrate. And it's a great day for the crowd to be out here doing that. Yeah, warmed up a lot. You know, we were pretty cold yesterday at the Abbott Chicago 5K. This morning we were a little worried, but it ended up being a beautiful day for a great run through 29 of Chicago neighborhoods. I'm Jen DeSalvo with Chris Miller. We will come back to mile 26 here. Back to you, Layla. <laughs> Jen and Chris, thank you so much as we continue to watch the runners come in at the finish line. Now go to Alex Maragos, who is joined by Emily Sisson. 
Yeah, thanks, Layla. We have Emily Sisson here, uh, first American woman to cross in a time I have uh, 220 How did it feel out there today, Emily? It was another amazing day. The crowds were electric. I really appreciated the cheers at the end. I felt really good until about mile 18, I had a side stitch come on, and around mile 21, I was really hurting. So all the Go Emily's, I really, really appreciated today. I was uh, proud to gut it out and still finish um, as top American. That's really cool. And yeah, another amazing day in Chicago. Just off your own record, uh, your own American record, which was here last year. Yeah. You seem to really like running in Chicago. You said you got some family here. You're from Milwaukee, so you got a lot of connections here. Yeah, my mom grew up uh, in the suburbs of Chicago, so all my cousins and aunts and uncles come out, and uh, it's amazing. Yeah, they hop on the L, and they just come around and cheer for me, and I love it. Yeah, I love seeing them. I love racing. I'm from the Midwest, so I love racing in Chicago. You said you wanted to run right around 220, and you were basically there, very close. How do you feel now going into your training now for the perhaps the Paris Olympic Games and everything that's ahead of you forward? Yeah, I felt really good up until it was around mile 18 or 19. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how good that felt. Um, and I'm happy that I could kind of just grind it out at the end when I wasn't feeling very good. So I've got some stuff to figure out before then. But um, but yeah, for feeling, for having the side stitch come on, I'm, I'm happy with how I handled it and was able to gut it out because it was tough those last eight miles. <laughs> yeah. I bet. Emily, thanks so much. Great to see you race again today here in Chicago. Thank you. Back to you guys. Alex, thank you so much. Now, last year, Emily Sisson said it was a special day. We know that Paris was inside for her, that 2024 Olympic gold. We have so much more here to come on the Chicago Marathon broadcast here on NBC Chicago. Stay with us. I'm going to try to guide my photographer a little bit closer so he can show you all of the energy and excitement out here on this course. We're at mile 20. And look at the crowd. They understand the Okay, Drone Reed. Um, you want me to chime in with like anything I talk to Diego or Kira about or anything? You want me to add in anything I talk to Diego and Kira about or anything else? Like any of what, whatever you need, Nelly. K Chapel in Chinatown. You got it. Yes, Kate Chapel in Chinatown. We're going to be on Kate, live. give me some boba yes. tea, Kate. Give me some boba. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you got it. Oh, I didn't know you could hear me. Nice I'm hit earlier. Than you. <laughs> Kevin Jeans is here. He's enjoying. We welcome you back here on this 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. As you continue to look at our outstanding drone footage, it is sponsored by Abbott Life to the Fullest. Let's go back out on the course and to our Kate Chapel. She joins us from Chinatown. Kate. Hey, Layla, it is exciting. It is amazing here in Chinatown. Just take a look at the crowd. Everybody is anxiously waiting for their runners to come by literally taking photos as we're coming by. Tell me where you're coming from. We're coming from Dublin. Dublin, who are you Who are you here to watch? Adrian, who is hopefully coming down here in one minute. One minute, that's amazing. And how many marathons has she run? She's run about 15, but this is her second, first one here in the States. Wonderful, enjoy, good luck to your wife. 
Tell me where you're coming from. Nebraska. And who are you here to support? Ah, uh, Marty. She's from New York. Amazing. Yeah. Has she run the Chicago Marathon yeah, before? Her first. Her Chicago first. Amazing. Good luck. All right, now I want to introduce you to Alder Woman, 11th Ward Alder Woman, Nicole Lee. Tell me what you're hoping people see here in Chinatown today. I, I hope what they're seeing and experiencing here is the welcoming feeling that our community rolls out the red carpet every year. We're so happy to have this be on the route for the Chicago Marathon. Um, every year, I think our residents look forward to it, and our business owners are obviously very happy because hopefully people, while they're here, they see their runners, they grab a bite to eat, and uh, explore a little bit before they go to their next stop. Just amazing. There's so much culture here in Chinatown, of course, and so many of the neighborhoods. It's such a, a bonus of the Chicago Marathon that the spectators and runners and participants get to see all the culture here. Just tell me what they're running through here at Cermak and Wentworth yeah. and just, again, some of the cultural icons that they're seeing in Chinatown. They're, they're running through uh, right under the, China, the iconic Chinatown gateway. Um, just to the right, they'll see the old On Leong uh, Merchants Association building, which is now the Pui Tak Center. It's a community center now. And as they go down further, they will see so many iconic signs from uh, lost eras of the restaurant industry here. Amazing. Alderwoman Lee, thank you. You're taking a look live, of course, at all of these amazing runners coming through mile, just about 21 and a half before they hit 22 here in Chinatown. The support from all the fans is amazing. Uh, Wentworth at Cermak here, just lined with fans from, as we just introduce you, all over the world. For now, we'll send it back to you. Our thanks to Kate Chaplin. Thank you so much for Alderman Lee joining us as well. Stay with us. We have much more to come here on the Bank of America Chicago Marathon on NBC Chicago. Of us, it's really cool. Hmm? Oh, I'm a, I'm about to go on. Hold on. And then Michelle, where is Michelle? Pilsen? Okay. Layla. Okay. Yeah, he's at mile 27, right? Let me know if you guys see my hockey blanket on here. Oh, Yvonne's got the pom-pom. Drone is right above us here at the finish line. It is sponsored by Abbott. Life to the fullest as we welcome you back here on this 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Now let's go out to Michelle Rulliford. She is joining us from Pilsen. Yes, we've got the cowbells, we've got confetti. It's always a party here in Pilsen, and we have been watching these runners make their way around this curve here at 18th and Loomis. This is a ritual for me, so I always like to see who has enough energy for a high five. So let's see what we can. Yes, let's go, let's go. It's so much fun. How many more? Oh, you got it, you got it, yes. Woo! Can we get one more? Can we get one more? Yes! 
so much fun. We love just pumping these runners up because this is when the fatigue starts to set in. We're at mile marker 20, so they've got six more miles to go, and we really want to help them get there. Who are you here to celebrate and cheer on this morning? Um, Jack from our church. Yes? yes. And have they ever run this race before? I'm not sure. I think it's my first year. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the expert. <laughs> uh, Jack and uh, yeah. Lydia. And Nick. Yeah. Have they ever run this race? Uh, one of them has, yeah. 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 What does your sign say? Go, go, Jack. All right, simple and straight to the point. Let's cheer on some more runners here. You can see them coming around. We've got the DJ playing some music. We've been doing the salsa out here just to stay warm, but those chilly temperatures, they didn't do anything to keep the crowd at home. We've got everybody out here. They've got their warm coats. They're covered in some blankets. They've got the hot coffee, anything they need to do. Although this weather has been great for the runners. I mean, we've seen a world record this morning. We're so excited. Excited to cheer everybody on as they make their way here through Pilsen. A lot of runners tell me every year that this is their favorite neighborhood because of the energy, because of the excitement, and because of the culture. We've got all of the puppets here. We've got so much. We got Gatorade for them, of course, the bananas to give them that extra boost. And of course, we got high fives, right? Yes! <laughs> never get enough of that. We love being out here in Pilsen and thank you for all tuning in and, and helping us celebrate the, another exciting year here with the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. I'm going to send it back to you. Thank you so much, Michelle. Nice to see the high fives in Pilsen. We love to see it. I know she's got a few more to give. We are right here at the finish line. As you can see, the runners are right behind us. We've already witnessed a world record today in Kelvin Kiftum. One of the best times for the women in Safan Hassan, who is new to the marathon. She finished her second with the Chicago Marathon today. We saw American men hit the Olympic standard of 208.10 below that. That hadn't happened yet today. And that happened for the first time. So they are working on their Olympics goals that they are trying to reach next season. And then, as we said, we also saw some amazing course records set in the wheelchair races as well. So what happens after they cross here at the finish line? Once they go past all the fanfare and they get their medals, that's where we find Stefan Holt. He is at mile 27. Hi, Stefan. Hey there, we're back here on Columbus Drive, right in front of the medical tent. This is where the doctors, the EMTs, the PAs, and nurses that are volunteering here at the marathon are all gathering, waiting for the first runners to come across the line. I'm here with Dr. George Champas, who's the medical director of the Chicago Marathon. Tell me about the common injuries you see after this race. Sure, so marathon medicine is uh, is quite a, quite a task in 26.2 miles. Exercise-associated collapse is something that we see quite frequently after you run 26 miles. The, pool, the blood pools in your legs get a little little lightheaded. We will see a lot of musculoskeletal injuries. We actually will still see heat stroke today. Uh, runners are running hard and fast. Uh, some low salt things. So we're prepared to manage all of those things. Left. This zone is so important because they've just been running for 26 miles. They're coming across the line. Some of them really pushing with everything they have. This is a spot to really stretch and kind of cool down. Talk about that process. Yeah, so this finish line, we're fortunate in Grand Park. It's designed where they can run. Uh, they could stop. And then they have a long way where they can kind of stand on their feet, keep walking. And we have a lot of personnel allow them to do that. I can imagine this is an incredible event for you and all the volunteers to get to be a part of. You know, over 2,000 medical staff, all of which work across the city, the state, um, all cheering our runners that are running for charities, for uh, breast cancer, diabetes, on and on. And for us, that's a special thing. All right, Dr. George Champ, it's good to see you. Thank you so much. Hope it's a good race today. That's it from here. Just be on the finish line. We'll send it back to you. Stefan, thank you very much. Once again, we are watching some great, great finishes here at the finish line with fans for the first time since 2013 on the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. We have more to come here in NBC Chicago.
can help. If you need help, you just let us know. We've got medical personnel that will be right there to help you. Just past the three hour mark. Absolutely amazing number of runners coming in. Some three and right at three hours. Welcome back to the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Here's a beautiful drone shot brought to you by Abbott, life to the fullest. Watching some of the runners make their way across the finish line. There's an announcer right there that's reading off some of the names of these finishers and their countries of origin. What an amazing accomplishment to see. I love to watch the finish line and the folks one guy just stopped and he just started crying into his hands. This is an amazing, amazing feat. What a great day for all of these runners and all of the runners yet to come. Want to send a shout out too, by the way, download the NBC Chicago app. If you've got a runner out there that you're watching, you can track them on the app and you can watch the streaming broadcast all the way until three o'clock this afternoon, streaming at NBCChicago.com and on the NBC Chicago app. Right now, we want to head back down to the field and check out Jen DeSalvo. She is with the Bank of America president once again. Hey, Jen, I know you are our ultra marathoner. You've done, you've done all the races all the time. What a great race, a world record here. Amazing. Yeah, it was incredible just to see him come through. We have a big screen behind us, so I got to watch him go all the way in. So what we're seeing right now are just thousands of runner one dropped to the ground and started doing push-ups. So you said somebody stopped and started crying. He started doing push-ups. It was amazing. Rita, the energy today, it's just incredible. It's amazing. This is my second year out here with you, Jen. And we've had personal records today. We've had course records today. We have a new men's world record set right here at the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. I got to hold the tape. It was phenomenal. Oh, I did get to see you doing that. Like, what does it feel like to see somebody coming through? What's going on in your heart and your head? The, the excitement um, from the crowd, from the runner. I mean, the runner had so much energy. He lapped back and thanked those people in the stands. No different than all the people you see out here right now. I know, I was like, oh, you're cheering right now. Just get to that line, get 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 through that tape. Um, but this, we hear all these families behind us. There's so much cheering. This is such a family event. And I know the bank is really behind that whole health and wellness when it comes to, you know, pass it on to your kids. Absolutely. I think the great thing about this race is you've got spectators lining the entire route through all 29 neighborhoods. It's estimated a roughly 1.7 million people come out. It's, we were standing here, Jen. We saw a family with kids holding up signs. They saw their loved one run on past who's going to make a sub three hours, it looked like. There's so many more people coming, and we always talk about the charity aspect of it. There are so many charity runners out there. It could be a record-setting year for charities, too. Absolutely. So this year of our 47,000-plus runners that started, 14,000 are running for charity. So if you're sitting at home and you're not a runner and you're not on the course, I can guarantee one of those 14,000 runners are giving back to a charity you care about. This year we're on pace to generate $30 million in a single day in a single race. And the one millionth runner is somewhere in there. They're out there somewhere. That one millionth runner is going to cross the line today as well. Oh my gosh, there's nothing that can top this day. All the records, perfect weather, and I'm sure we're going to see a bunch of personal bests out here on the marathon course. From the 26 mile, the Bank of America Chicago Marathon, I'm Jen, back to you. <laughs> I know, Jen, you're right there at the base of Mount Roosevelt. What an amazing day it's been. Four course records, one world record, amazing Olympic trial making feats. It's been a great day. We'll be back with more of the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Get back to you. 
Welcome back to the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. As you see this group of runners make their turn from Roosevelt onto Columbus Drive with the finish line in their sight. What an amazing day we've had here in Chicago. One of the six world marathon majors, a world-class event with a world record to go with it. I am just thrilled. I've been running on adrenaline almost all morning long. And now we want to send it out to the halfway point because there's still folks that are making their way along the course. And we have dispatched two of our favorite people, Matt Rodriguez and Courtney Hall at the halfway mark. Hey guys, what's it looking like? <laughs> It's looking like somebody had their coffee yeah, this yeah. morning. Coffee. We're here with some crazy fans. We've got, we've got Cynthia, Liz, and Rosie with us. Okay, I got to tell you, we saw these ladies from like a mile away screaming, and we said, we need to talk to them. We don't even know each other. We just met. We're so excited. So what? You're so enthusiastic. Where does that come from? It comes from my husband has run multiple marathons, yeah. so I am the expert yes. spectator. Okay. Listen, okay. I train all year my lungs for this. Okay. I love this. Give us one more. Whoa! Whoa! Yes. And, and listen, Liz and Rosie are waiting for their friends. Yes. We're waiting for Lisa Passion Pie. She's running, so she's coming up here somewhere, so I keep turning around trying to find her. Okay. But this is very exciting. Yes. We're very excited. Yeah, we're excited. We're excited. We're excited. We just got her. We're really excited. You don't even know. Her, her energy was awesome because we've been like, we're right. really so so Everyone's just. Cool. So Everybody's attracted to Cynthia. Oh my God, new yes. new BFFs, I think. Do we have a little gift for them? Oh, yeah. We have a little gift for them. <laughs> Cynthia, Cynthia, because you're so dedicated, we know that you're going to be out here no matter what. You're not even going to take a break. So we don't want the enthusiasm to stop. So if you gotta go, girl, you go and yeah. you cheer. You and you can, you can depend on that. One size fits all. 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 Yeah. But listen, you were saying earlier that you got emotional watching these people I come up. I really do. I, I mean, the effort that goes on. All different kinds of people come out here. It's just so encouraging, emotional. It's really inspirational. I, I, I just love it. The heart and grit it takes, the least I can do is cheer for them. I, I, I just, I, I absolutely love this event. And it's a great city to do it in. Yes. And the, the crowd, the energy, I just, I love everything about this event. Okay, you gotta pass out it. these Depends. Yeah, I love yeah, your yeah, answer. Give, give those yes, Depends sir. to your friend who's running. All right, over to you, Layla. I know if there's one thing, Matt and Courtney, I can depend on you two. I can depend on you two. That's, that's outstanding. I'm joined now by Diego, who is on the moto. You were essentially by yourself with the moto and Kelvin Kipton, watching him create this amazing world record. And I was really intrigued by what you said when you said you're helping pace him because he was by himself. It was just you guys. Yeah, no, so when we got out, he was very impatient. He kept directing traffic. He kept telling the guys to just kind of ease off, telling his rabbits to go. And then around mile seven, he had one rabbit. And he wasn't really helping, and then I could just tell, I was like, he's going to go, he's going to go. And of course, when he took off right around half marathon, 14 miles, it was like, boom. And he thought, there was like a kilometer that flashed around 320, and he dropped the 421 mile, and I was like, dude. And so I just yelled at him, like, that's too fast. He said, no, he's pointing at the split, and then a 240 kilometer popped. And then I was like, that's not right. You have to keep going. And afterwards, I think I kind of gained his trust, and he was just looking at me like, what's going on, what's going on? So I'd be yelling, 248, and I started giving him case. And at 40K, he yelled, he didn't yell, he pointed at his, at his uh, watch, and he said, what, what's going on? And I said, you're at two hours and 41 seconds. I think the world record is there, you can do it. And he just started charging, 800 to go. I yelled at him again, it's 800, 800. Of course, there's a big sign. He looked at me, and he smiled. Like, he just looked at me, and he just went like, and I was like, okay, it's going to happen. So then from there, I just directed my energy into cheering on and getting the, tra uh, the, the people, the spectators, to know what they were witnessing. And I was yelling, like, come on, let's pump them up. But, you know, I don't think that I was really like, helping them out. I think if I had kept my mouth shut, he might have gone under two hours. 
It seemed like he was looking for that sub two hour mark, but in your career, both as a runner and as a commentator, how do you put this into context? Oh, my mind's been blown. This is the most amazing thing I've ever witnessed. Like my whole perspective of marathoning has changed. Like a marathon is no longer an endurance race. A marathon is no different than a 5K or a 10K in the track. And the punches, the blows that Kipton was throwing out there, like nobody could handle him. Like the guy is just so, he's a phenomenal athlete. Like he's 23 and breaking two hours, it's no longer like a pipe dream. I think it's gonna happen. After what we've seen out of the great Eliud Kipchoge, to see him pick up where he's not even leaving off, just joining him in on this greatness is something to to witness. Well, I mean, Elliot ran amazing in uh, Berlin, and I, I remember he was going for the world record. I saw it, and I was like, okay, okay, but he looked human towards the end. No, kept him like I just knew when I saw 6045, I was like, the world record might be gone just because his style of racing is a huge negative split, and ideally anybody that knows anything about running will tell you that's the way to run fast. And it's just in Kipton's DNA, like he just negative splits. He has an amazing like explosiveness. Every time he goes and grabs a water bottle, he breaks the, the people that are with him. That's incredible. And then we also want to give credit to the two Americans who set the Olympic standard and got that 208.10 time. That is big today. Yeah, no, so we had a lot of contenders, and one of the names that we didn't really mention much was Clayton, but I spoke to Clayton before, and I knew he was ready. I spoke to his wife, and... He's Connor Matt's training partner. You know, Coach Ed Eistone gets everything right. So we knew that, it, that he could get it. But still, 208 flat for Clayton was, in many people's eyes, a shocker. But if you have been keeping up, he's been on fire in the U.S. road circuit. He beat Matt to the 20K. So I'm not going to say that I was surprised, but I was just happy to see him get it right because he, he struggled a bit in the marathon. But you could just it was just validation of all the hard work and the self-belief he has in himself. Diego, you were there every step of the way. We can't thank you enough. And of course, it's great to see that work with Ed Eyestone's pupils as well here crossing the finish line. Thank you. We have much more to come on this amazing world record edition of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Please stay with us. Is he still, he's, he, okay, um, how to watch. Do I have this? I think I do, right? Uh, okay. How to watch your athlete. Yes, I've got it. Okay, is Kira clear? She wants to know. Is Kira D'Amato clear or do you want to keep her? You're clear. Thank you so much. Safe travels, Kira. A lot of shirtless runners here today. That cop. Record-setting like record number two. Over 47,000 registered participants. One of whom will be the one million finisher today. Oh, yeah. Uh, since 1977. Today, expected to see our one million finisher. Welcome in Canada, Norway. We are back here from the finish line at the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. And we may be close to wrapping up our coverage here on NBC Chicago. But if your favorite runner is out on the course, they very well could be crossing right now. You want to see them cross the finish line later as well? You can check out our streaming channel. And now let's go out to Stefan Holt, who has passed this finish line. Hi, Stefan. Jason, Jason. Oh, 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 oh. 
This is Luke Evans, who just crossed the line and is now reuniting with his fiance and his family here. Good to see you. Yeah, How was it? You. It was a blast. Yeah, it was really fun. It's a, this is a special, special uh, event. You've got your cheer squad here rooting you on. Excited to see, and you've got your finisher beer here. That's got to be a delicious beverage right now. It's delicious. Yeah, it never, uh, never tasted better than than right now. Yeah. Congratulations, congratulations on a job well done. We're here at the 27th mile. This is where the runners can reunite with their friends and family who've been rooting them on this whole time, this entire experience in Chicago. The bar is open, so anyone who's still running, we're all waiting for you. Back to you. Oh, that is so cool. I always love seeing the finish line. I can't imagine that accomplishment. So much energy went into this 26.2 miles. Now we want to send it back down to the finish line and Alex Maragos. You had the uh, sort of assignment of the day. You got to talk to the world record breaker, man. What, what, a, what a bonus. I know how lucky I am, Mary, and I, I don't doubt it. I, th I say I have the assignment of the day every single year. This is now my seventh time at the finish line. I've been lucky enough to see two world records, but I've never seen anything like we saw today from Kelvin Kiptum. I mean, just pushing through to the end, had the crowd behind him, knew he had the world record in his sights. He said he saw that time and jumping into the arms of Kerry Pinkowski. Like I said, when we gave out the awards, people were crying here. The pure emotion from Kerry, from Kelvin, of knowing that he wanted to achieve this all along. He talked about the course record and talked a little bit about the world record and then him coming through was something I don't think I will ever forget when he leapt into Kerry's arms. And just what a deep race, four course records. Every single one of the categories had a course record today. Catherine De Bruyne bursting onto the scene here in America. Safan Hassan, who was so fun to talk to as well, just she's like, I guess I like marathons. I guess you do. You've done two, you won two. So just an amazing uh, day overall. I think the most memorable that I've personally covered here, um, just filled with just a wonderful field and more good memories being made right behind me here. It's, it's just an incredibly emotional day and a wonderful 45th running. And now we just got to wait to see who that millionth cro uh, finisher is uh, later on today. It was just a great day overall, guys. Alex, I couldn't hear a word you said, but I could see the enthusiasm on your face. And I know that we'll be talking about this because you did have the best spot, no doubt. You saw four course records, amazing stuff. And Michelle Relaford is out in Pilsen. Love seeing you high five those runners as they go by. You always have such great energy. How's it going out there now? It's so much fun. These runners, Marion, they're trying to get to where Alex is right now. They're trying to get to the finish line, and we're trying to get him there. We've got our cowbell. <laughs> and we are pumped up. The crowd here, we understand the assignment. We just have a really excited family here. You just saw your husband. It looked like you were crying as you saw him pass by. Who are you, who are you rooting for? What's his name? Rob! Okay, Rob, and how proud are you of your dad? Super proud. This is like his fourth marathon. Awesome. What was it like seeing him pass by through Pilsen? Oh, it was so exciting. We're so proud of him. Woohoo! What's Rob's last name? Ben. Rob Spender. We're from Toronto, Canada. <laughs> Woo! Toronto, Canada. Wow. Woo! <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Let's take a look. Okay, we're seeing the runners make it through this curve here. All right. Love the energy here. We're at 18th and Loomis, mile marker 20. Six more miles to go. We're trying to get them all pumped up. We got to wrap this up with a couple more high fives. Let's go, let's go, woo! We got one more, can you, come on. She said, uh-uh. Come on, woo! <laughs> Marion, back to you. She said, no, ma'am. <laughs> Kate, thank you. Now let's go to Kate Chapel in Chinatown. Hey, Layla, spirits and energy just as high here in Chinatown. We've got noisemakers, we've got Lady Gaga on the loudspeaker right now. Earlier it was We Will Rock You. And check out the cheer and dance team from DePaul University. This is their eighth year here, along with hundreds, thousands of fans lining Wentworth at Cermak for mile uh, Chinatown, mile about 21 and a half. 
here. Look at all these exciting fans. Let's talk to just a couple. Tell me your name and where you're coming from and who you're cheering for. Sure, my name is Vince. This is my wife, Rebecca. We're coming from Burning Hells. We're cheering for our godfather, Jeff Abad. You got this, man. You got this. This is not his first marathon. He's done so many of these. He's not a rookie. And he's been to many cities. What does he like about Chicago? He loves the, uh, he loves the city. He loves the environment. He loves everything. He loves the Cubs, the Bears. He's a Chicago guy. He loves it. Woo! All right. We have a lot of excitement here in Chinatown as, of course, they're edging the, the glory, as Lady Gaga would say, inching ever closer to the finish line. <laughs> It is an amazing atmosphere with so much culture and history, and we have seen fans from Ireland, Belgium, and beyond. It has been an amazing experience for the runners and for us, uh, spectating, watching, and just enjoying what is the Chicago Marathon. We'll send it back to you. All right, thanks so much, Kate. Let's really quickly get out to Jen DeSalvo, who is right before Mount Roosevelt. Jen. Marion, we've seen elites finish, but there are still thousands of runners on the course that are running for charity. You know, 15 years ago, I walked into an info session to learn how to run the Bank of America Chicago Marathon for charity. And a woman named Julianne Villa, she stepped up and she told the story of how she lost the love of her life to cancer. Since that day, I run eight Chicago marathons to raise funds for a cure. And Julianne, well, the running community had to say goodbye to her this year after her own decade-long fight with cancer. Her fight's not over, neither is ours, and neither is the fight for 14,000 runners so out on the course Parker. today that are running to make a difference in someone else's life. I'm Jen DeSalvo, back to you, Marion. Thanks so much, Jen, great job today. Layla, you had a front row seat for today's finish. Gosh, what a great seat to be in. What are your final impressions? Well, thanks very much, Marion. I know you and I were looking forward to the possibility of a world record being set and just the inspiration of having that 2024 Olympics coming up in Paris. And we saw everything we expected to see today. Not only do we see record paces out of the wheelchair athletes, we saw Sifan Hassan compete in her second marathon at an amazing pace, and then obviously Calvin Kiptum. And to have the fans here for the first time since 2013 really is making a difference for so many people crossing this finish line. You could even see it with Kelvin Kiptum himself, Marian. All right, thanks so much, Layla Rahimi. Marian Brooks here. Have a great day. And thank you for watching the 45th running of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Oh, the hardships I know we're